and we're live. I think we are live. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, please let me know uh, if you can hear me and you can see me okay and the audio is okay and the video is okay. We're here with Too Many Bones tonight. This is the ninth video that I've done for this game this year. However, this one is very special because I'm joined by Emily. Hello. So Emily is here with me uh, tonight and this is the first time this year that I've had somebody round uh, to play this game in person. Now I'll tell you a little bit of a story about this game. I got the first my my first introduction to Too Many Bones was that when I was at I think it was Origins or Gen Con, it was either Origins or Gen Con about three years ago, and I picked up a copy of Undertow because that is a smaller box, lower price point, and I brought it home. And Emily was one of the people who I tried to play the game with. It was an unsuccessful game in terms of. We were completely overwhelmed by the rules and we didn't really have a clue what we were doing and then the game got put away and at some point in future I knew that I would put in the time and effort to learn the game. Well, here we are, three years on, <laughs> Emily recognises the game but doesn't remember anything about it at all, which is good. So tonight, uh, you know how much I like teaching games to other people, I'm going to be teaching Emily how to play the game from scratch. So we're going to be playing a two-player game tonight. I'm a little louder than normal, okay, I can turn me down a bit. I've been fiddling around with the microphone settings just because uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to sort some microphone things out, but hopefully that's okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be teaching Emily how to play. This video, uh, unlike some of my previous videos in the last couple of months, which have been more playthroughs, the idea of this video is this is going to act as a tutorial for those people that are brand new to Too Many Games. So whenever anybody asks, what's the best video for learning the game, hopefully, if this one goes well, this will be one of the ones that you can watch if you have never played Too Many Bones before. What I will say is if you can turn on the Klingon subtitles because I want this video to be correct. If at any point we get any rules wrong, the chat will probably tell me. But if we if we pick anything up afterwards, if you turn on your Klingon subtitles, I will add some Klingon subtitles onto the video afterwards if we make any mistakes so that you can watch this video in the in the safety that what you're watching is correct and if it's not correct there'll be text on screen telling you right too many bones cooperative game one to four players uh we're playing two player tonight we are playing mostly with the base game <coughs> however i i have chosen that the first three days worth of cards are not from the base game right the reason for that is the ones with the base game day one two and three are fixed but one of the expansion sets in introduced a whole load of variant cards just to mix it up a bit. Yeah. So the first three cards are days one, two, and three, but they are random ones, not the ones from the base game. Other than that, everything else that you see is from the base game only. Uh, we are using base game gear locks. We're using base game baddies. We're using base game loot. Everything else is, is base game only. Right, let's set up your character. Okay, so you've got your character mat. You've got mm -hmm. your dice tray. This is from the trove chest. Uh, and you've got your sheet of hieroglyphics, your two-sided sheet of hieroglyphics that I will help you decipher and understand. Right. And don't worry, you don't need to know all of it. Um, there are different routes to playing a character. There are different ways that your character can advance. So you're not going to be doing everything that's printed on there. You will be doing some of it. There is also some recommendations on the other side for a beginner build strategy with regards to your stats and your skills. If you wanted to, you could literally just follow that for your first game. Okay? Right. Uh, but let's set it up. So what you need to do, first of all, is we need to decide what difficulty level we're playing on. Now, there are three difficulty levels included in the game. Uh, if you are brand new to Too Many Bones, it doesn't mention these difficulty levels at the start. It mentions them right at the back of the rulebook. So just be aware, if you haven't played before, page 23 of the new rulebook, they are there. Now, Adventure is the easiest mode. We can play on that one if you want to or we can play on Heroic Adventurer, I would not suggest playing on Legendary. I've never played on Legendary. I've played on Adventurer and Heroic, um, but it, it's up to you. Do you want a bit more of a challenge, or do you want the easy one? Um, I don't mind. You pick. Which one Me do you pick. think we should do? Okay. Uh, what does the chat think we should pick? Does the chat think we should play on Adventurer or Heroic? <laughs> Let me know in the chat while we do the rest of the setup. Okay, so these are your stats. You have health which is how many hit points you've got. You've got dexterity. Now, in this game, dexterity is basically how many things you can do in a round. All right. You've got your attack value and you've got your defense value. The base stats are shown on there, but you'll notice that you've got four stat dice. 
okay and what you do is you put you increase your stats by putting the stat die so if i put that one there i've got an attack of two yeah okay now if we're playing on adventurer mode you get two extra hit points at the start if we're playing on heroic mode we get one let's just see what the chat is saying so graham is saying heroic because he likes to see me die um <laughs> juiced is saying legendary uh we've got most people are saying adventurer i think yeah okay so we're going to play on adventure <laughs> mode so you want to add two to your hit points so you basically take one of the dice set it to a two put it in the hit points speaking of hit points where's the red chips have i put them away accidentally i think i have i have right let's get the health chips out these are the health chips so what you need to do is you need to take your character chip and you put seven underneath it. Now seven is a lot. Five, six, seven. seven. Okay, so that's the hit points of your character. I am also going to set my hit points to seven as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's my character chip. Okay, right, that's that done. Do we start with any other improved stats? We get one training point. Okay, so that's the other thing that we get on adventure mode is before the game even starts, we get a training point. Now, we're right. going to get training points during the game. Every time you get a training point, you spend it to improve your character. It's the way that the, uh, the leveling up system works within the game. And whenever you get a training point, you can either buy one of your stats or you can buy one of your skills. First thing we need to do is we need to see if your character starts with any of these skills. So on your, mm -hmm. on your sheet here... Have a look down. If any of these have got a circle around them, you actually start with that die before the game begins. They've got a star yep, around star. them. Any Is with a circle? I don't see any with a circle. None with a circle. Right, okay. So both of our characters don't start with any skills. Okay. I don't think so. Was no, I'm not mystic? seeing any. Picket needs to be on other side. Patches too. Picket needs to be on other side. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, the chips. I always forget this. Oh. But one side has stars around the edge. That's the that's the super super upgraded side. You're on the other side. Ah right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I always forget that. Oh, so we could set different difficulty levels. Ah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Oh. So I'm gonna play on heroic I, do, I don't think this is an official official way to play in the rule book but you're absolutely right i don't see why characters couldn't play yeah okay yeah let's do that again not not an official rule but we're going to start with the characters on different different <laughs> different so you're playing on adventurer adventure. i'm playing on heroic adventurer okay right. so basically you've got a training point that training point can be used to buy another point of health and you simply tick the die up and you get an extra thing. Or you can buy a point of dexterity. If you want to buy a point of attack or defense, you need to make a roll to see whether you succeed or not. If you don't succeed, you have to spend the training point elsewhere. You don't lose it, you just you just have to spend it elsewhere. Right. Okay. Alternatively, you buy one of these skills. Now, the star means that you can buy that skill without having any other skill. So your character is divided. Oh, that's why there's a star yeah, on here. Then. Four areas. Yeah. Um, the red one, the yellow one, also the orange one, the, the sort of greeny blue one and the purple one. Here are consumables. You can't buy these. Okay, you will find them on your way. So in other words, if you want to go down this route, which is the captain route, that is the first skill die you buy. And that is skill die number one. And you'll notice in your tray, mm -hmm. all of the dice are numbered. There is a tiny little number in the top left of each one. Mm -hmm. And they're laid out in the same format as that, if you rotate oh, yeah, yeah, it around. Yeah. So if you wanted to buy that skill die, you would take die number one and you'd put it into that slot. And that would that would cost you one training point. Once you've bought that one, you see these arrows? Mm -hmm. That means in order to buy two, you must have had number one. Or you could buy five if you had one. Okay, so once you've bought one, you can either go that way or that way or, or whatever. That's how mm -hmm. that works. These ones are slightly different. You can buy any of these. They're all four completely independent. There's no arrows between them. Right, yeah. Okay, so every character works in a slightly different way. Um, now, if you look on the back of your character sheet, it will give you the beginner's build strategy. And it tells you, and this is purely a beginner's guide, you, you can follow this if you want to, and it, it can be useful. Um, if you're going to increase your stats, 
that's what you should do for your stats. Mm -hmm. If you want to increase your skills, mm -hmm. that's what you should do for your skills. Okay? It isn't saying do all of the stats first and then do the skills. It's if you're going to increase your stats, this is what you should do. If you're going to increase your skills, this is what you should do. Okay. Um, your choice in this game probably doesn't matter too much because it's a learning game. However, mm -hmm. your choice of how you develop your character mm -hmm. will depend on which tyrant you are facing. So at the start of every game, you choose a tyrant. We, we've chosen Mulmesh. I posted it on some Facebook groups this afternoon, and Mulmesh was the one uh, that people suggested, which isn't going to be too harsh against your particular character. And if you look on the bottom of the little things here, I don't know if you can see this, yeah. These are the different types of baddies that we're going to be facing today. There's multiple direct types of baddies in the game. We're going to be facing beasts, bog and scales. If you don't know the game, this isn't going to mean anything whatsoever. But right. once you know the game, you know what kind of enemies you're going to be facing. So they refer to these colors? Not directly, but for example, um, I know we're not going to be fighting any goblins today. Because goblins are not on this sheet. I yeah. know that goblins have a particular ability called Mischief. Hmm. Mischief gets rid of dice in your active slots. Therefore, if you had any skills which put dice in your active slots and we were fighting goblins, you might not want to do that. You might want to choose a different yeah. route. So the more you play this game, the more you will go, ah, right, we're going to be facing this, this and this. Therefore, I'm going to be doing this. And also, certain characters are better against certain tyrants than others. So this is the one that people on various Facebook groups suggested would be, would be okay. Whereas if we were to play another one, people would say, oh my god, pick it and patches against that one? No chance. Okay, mm. so yeah, the type of type of tyrant you're facing, different characters face it in a different way. Uh, yeah, Johnny's saying Mulmesh is a nice one to start with. So there we go. Right. So what do you want to do with your, you get one training point. I don't, oh, yeah. but you do. Now if George is in the chat, George will say, spend it on decks. George's biggest bit of advice is always buy an extra point of dex. Um, oh no, I do. Yeah, I get a training point as well. The only difference is you get an extra hit point. So, what am I? Do I start with any of these? I don't think I do. Uh, I'm actually going to buy skill dice number one to start with. Whether that's the right thing to do or not, I don't know. But I am going to buy skill dice number one. There you go. That's my one training point done. I did sort of explain dexterity, roughly. It's how many things you can you do. You can do, yeah. Every movement you make on this board is cost you one dex. And every dice you use costs you a dex. And every attack dice you use costs you a dex. And every defense dice you use. So if your right. dexterity is only two. It makes sense to boost. Yeah, that means all, all you could do in a round is move two. You then couldn't attack. Yeah. Okay, now you've got three dex. <laughs> which means you can move three spaces, or you can move one, yeah. attack one, and a defense, or you could stand still, roll one attack and two defense. Okay, so you can do three things every round. Right, okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we basically start off. So how do, how do we win this game? We have to try and find this tyrant and defeat it. Okay, the tyrant has, now this is upside down for Emily, but we have nine days to do it in. Right. On the ninth day, we must challenge Mulmesh and defeat him. Mm-hmm. At least, right? If we get to day nine and we don't have six progress points, we lose. So we have to have six progress points before day nine. Okay. Before day nine. If we have six progress points on day eight, we can challenge Mulmesh on day eight. The advantage of doing that is if we fail, we get another go at him on day nine. Whereas okay. if we decide on day eight, we got six progress points, but we're not going to do it. <laughs> we'll have another day to get more XP. Mm. And then we fight him on day nine and lose. We've lost. Right. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Generally speaking, every day that you are successful in doing something, you get a progress point. So if everything goes swimmingly for us tonight, and we have the first six days and everything goes well, we'll have six progress points, and on day seven, we can face Mulmesh. I feel like that's not very likely. Think, things generally go wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to use the D12 to track how many days yeah. we've spent, so we're currently on day one, and I'm going to use the D6, <laughs> the gaming rules D6, to track how many progress counters we've got. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not the way you're supposed to do it in the game. You're supposed to keep the cards and add up the progress tokens, but it, it's just easier to track it with dice. Yes. You are also, just so you know, you are also supposed to read the other side of Mulmesh so that you know what you're facing. We're not going to do that tonight, but when you are playing, I would strongly recommend you do that. I just don't want to well, uh, overwhelm Emily with, with too much specialist knowledge. We're going to be fighting Mulmesh at the end. Other than that, 
we are ready to start. Okay, so there is something called the Garg, which is the Gearlock Adventuring Reference Guide, which contains lots and lots of information, but the thing on it is the adventure routine. We do a new day, we turn the day counter, we're on day one. We have an encounter, which is a card from this deck here, get rid of the cat hair. Then after the encounter, we divide any spoils and we, we get training points and we, we apply the progress. And then we have a recovery phase, which I always forget about. OK. OK. Um, and we repeat that until we decide that we're going to fight Mulmesh, which is there in the new encounter. OK, so turn the day counter to one. We resolve a new encounter. So before we resolve a new encounter, I'll tell you about this deck. This deck is made up of uh, the number of uh, the number of days that we have nine minus three so six general cards mm -hmm. because the top three cards are fixed yeah mm -hmm. the top three cards are easy nice introduction cards you don't want to be fighting a massive monster on day one right so the first three days cards are special cards however mulmesh has a special card mixed in there which is why we have a cover card on top so that we don't know where mulmesh's card is we might find it we might not okay, okay. so i've shuffled them uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the first card off and we're going to read it. Uh, and yeah, just as a reminder, we are using variant cards from the Age of Tyranny. So this isn't from the base game, but this is a day one card. Right. Duster's Aid. Duster had always been a divisive gearlock. Folks seem to either despise and mistrust her or romanticise her life and exploits. Naturally, the council had a number of excuses for taking her from the deep wood as a child. Like most things council-related, gearlocks tend to trust and believe it word for word. When Duster reappeared in Obendar just days ago, she had a very different story to tell. The warnings she offered prior to heading into the deep north have the town on edge. Many simply don't believe she's betrayed her fellow gearlocks and swear she's been framed. Others think the duster up in Ebenhart must be some sort of clone or imposter. He left a few helpful tools around town, should the residents of Obendar decide to rebel. It feels strange putting them to use against her and her fellow tyrants, but free help is free help. Okay, so we have story, which won't mean much to you, but duster is a, a tyrant in the base game, but became a gear lock later. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we flip over to the other side of the card. So every card, no, that's not true. Most cards have a choice, okay? The icon here, that weird shield with the things coming out of it, mm -hmm. tells you whether it is a combat or not. Both of these are non-combat, so we're not going to have any kind of fight. But okay. we have a choice. We either... The, th this cache seems oddly personalised. Each gear lock gains one of their consumable dice. That is an option. You can either gain Orcish Ale or... What's that? Gobby Jerky. Gobby Jerky. Okay. Alternatively, we can say this cache has nothing, nothing special, but it's plenty useful. If we do that, we get a loot each. Okay, so if you look on the right hand side, that doesn't give us any loot, but it does mm -hmm. give us that. Mm -hmm. That gives us a loot. It's a random loot card each. Either way, we get one progress point and we get a training point. So whichever choice we make, we get a progress point and we get a training point. But if we choose the second option, we get a random loot card and we treat this card as loot. What's that? Tough Shroom Extract. Heal entire party for two hit points each when used in battle. Or heal entire party to maximum hit points outside of battle, single use. So this is a card I've not seen before. So do we get this as well? That sounds quite as easy. That? I think we do. So if we choose that one, we both get a consumable dice. Right. Or if we choose the bottom one, we both get a random loot card. Random loot card. And we also keep get the bottom this thing. as loot. Right. I'll leave it up to you. That sounds better to keep it as loot. Okay. Doesn't it? Yeah. So each character can have four pieces of loot or equipment, whatever, which is why I've got space here on mm -hmm. mine and you've got space there on yours. There is a particular type of loot called heavy that takes up three slots. But let's get the loot card. What's Joyce saying? Don't you have the card holder from your trove chest? I do have the card holder from my <laughs> trove chest. Is that what it's for? I do have a, a bit of plastic that I wasn't sure what it's for. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm going to use this for now. Uh, so you, you get a bit of loot. Thank you. I get a bit of loot. So loot goes face up to the right of your board. You have got single use. 
a so, troll brew. Mm -hmm. Outside of battle, permanently increase your health stat die by one. At the start of your next battle, reduce your current HP by three. So, you can drink it. It's going to increase this by one, so you've got a permanent yeah. extra health. But at the start of the next battle, basically you, you don't feel very well for a bit. But after that, you've got an extra hit point for the entire rest of the game. Since the first battles tend to be relatively calm, that might be a good thing to do straight away. Yeah, I rather have, than later. Yeah, I have utility parts on your turn, mm -hmm. unexhaust any one die. Okay, that could be useful. And I'll keep that for now as well. So we've got that loot, we've got that loot. So this is yeah. heal the entire party for two each in battle. Yeah. Or outside of battle, heal the entire party to maximum. Mm. Okay. Right. And we get a progress point and we get a training point. So yep, you got one progress. progress point. So what would you like to do with your training point? <sighs> what Maybe am I, I going to do with dice. my training point? See, I've got one of my dice. I think... Uh, do I? See, I bought that. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy a dex. So I'm, I'm going to buy myself a point of dex. That's my training point done. Attack and defense, by the way, that's how many dice you roll when you attack. And defense right. is kind of how So many currently dice you I only roll one. Whenever you I attack somebody, roll. you roll one dice. Yeah. And that will cost you one dex. So if you increase yes. your attack to two, you get to roll two dice, but that will cost you two dex to roll two dice. Okay. Which is why dex is essential because everything else relies on it. Yeah, so there you go. Keep the day card, it's a loot route. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I got rid of it, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's loot. Right. Okay, I will stand my ground. Mm -hmm. So you buy skill dice means, number one, you just pop that. it in there. You don't roll these dice when you put them in there, mm -hmm. because you roll them when you use them. Okay. Okay. Right, that is almost the end of day one, but we have the recovery phase. And then should I drink the troll brew now, then? I'd do it now. Yeah. Yeah, do it now. Right, so you get a, you get an extra hit point. This one goes up to okay, three. Which means you Im immediately get one of those, but... Or does it not go up by three? Yeah. To three? yeah. It goes up from two to three. Two to three, So yeah. you've got eight health max. Right. But at I've the start got to... of your next battle, you're going to lose three hit points. Yeah. So you don't lose three hit points now. It's only at the start of the next battle. Um, so we'll pop that there as a reminder. Oh, yeah, good thinking. Okay, right. So we have the recovery phase. Now, in the recovery phase... Um, we can trade loot between us. So since you don't have any loot now, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give you that one. Um, we can make a lock picking attempt if we'd found something with a, with a lock that needs picking. And then we have individual options. So your three options are rest and recover, which would heal you to full. So you're not, you don't need to do that. Search for better loot, which basically means discarding a loot card that you have, rolling six attack dice, and for every bones, you get a new loot. Right. Now, the last time I did this, I lost three loot and didn't roll a single bones on 18 dice, right? <laughs> There's only one bones on an attack dice. But basically, if you've got a loot card that's no good, or you want something better, oh. you take a risk and you get rid of it and you roll dice. I'm not going to, because I think this might be quite useful for me. And the third option is scout the area. So we're probably both going to scout the area on day one, yep. which is what generally happens. So when you scout the area, you roll a d6. If you want to roll a d6, it's a one. one. That means you can look at the top chip from that stack, and you put it face up, back on top, and then we decide whether we want to put it to the bottom or not. And when you first start playing the game, you have literally no idea, no idea. whether it's good or not. Again, this will come with experience. You will know, you will go, oh... That's a particularly easy one for our characters, so we'll leave it on top. Or that's a particularly hard one for our characters, we'll put it on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at what this is. This is a goblin yearling. It had two attack. It's got flight. So let me just remind myself what flight does. That's on here. Uh, so at the end of this unit's turn, you put a flight die on it. And while it's in flight, it's, in, it's untargetable. Okay. But... Um, on its next turn, if the if it's got a flight dice on it, you remove it. So basically, every other turn, we can't hit it. 
Right. Okay. Right. Uh, what, what do you think in the chat? <laughs> do you think in the chat that we should be putting that one to the bottom or the top? I'm thinking it's not too bad. Um, the downside of this one is this number in green here is its initiative. Oh, right. So it's so when we when we fight it, mm -hmm. it's going to go on five initiative, which means it's probably going to go before us because your initiative dice is. Oh, yeah, we'll need your initiative dice, by the way. Uh, this is your initiative die. OK, we roll our dice at the start of each battle. The so mine is three, 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 four, four. Yours is two, two, three, 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 three five. five. There you go. It's got it on there. Oh yeah. So there's a there's actually a very sl slim chance that we're going to be going before it. Very. Which means it's going to fly. Which means we can't hit it on round one. We'd have right. to wait until round two to hit it. So it's just something to consider. Uh, Mark is saying he'd put it to the bottom because it rolls four attack dice before it can be attacked. Yeah. So it will attack us. Uh, and hit us for two and then it'll fly so we can't hit it and then on the next round it'll hit us for two and then it'll be down on ground level where we can hit it so right most people in the chat are saying we're going to bury it okay the downside of burying it is we don't know now what's on the top okay but mm -hmm. i'm also going to scout as well i've rolled a three which means i also look at the same side this is one two three this is four five this is six Okay. And you can always choose a lower one if you want to. So even if we roll a six, we yeah. could say we're going to look at this one. So I've drawn a dragon whelp, which is also going on initiative five. Uh, it's also got two health. It's also got two attack dice. Doesn't fly though. It doesn't fly. It has the ability weaken, which means whenever it attacks us, we become weakened and we lose one dex on the following turn. And again, it's initiative five, which means that's going to hit us before we can go. It's a ranged character, so it's going to be further away from us, so it's going to be harder for us to get at it. Again, interested to know what you think in the chat. Yeah, the whelp is also very annoying early game. I was looking at that and I was thinking, I don't like the look of that. Mm. I was going to say, if we buried the last so one, this one sounds even worse. We're, we're going to bury that one as well. Again, this is... I mean, I'd love to get to the point with this game where I know it well enough to mm. be able to not ask people in the chat that decision. Mm. But I don't know the game well enough because I've played three or four different gear locks and I've only played against Mull Mesh once. So, you know, this, this game is... This could become a lifestyle game. There are people in the chat who play this game and nothing else. Yeah. And they become experts. Well, I can see that. There's so much There's detail. There's so much detail. And this, this, is, this is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> right, that is the end of the first day. Okay. So we go on to the next day, we go on to day two, and we draw an encounter card. Remember, this is another fixed card, so it's not going to be too dangerous. Battle in the square. The walls come crumbling down before anyone has a chance to trip the alarm. The fountain in Obendar Square is the first victim. The spray of water makes it difficult to see anything. The next victims are a couple of hapless humans who have now been relocated to the outside of Obendar, courtesy of an effortless toss. Kill old one, kill old one, the troll roars. The troll can be fought here, but it'd be safer to lead it back outside the city gates and give the city guard a chance to get its heavy artillery online. So this sounds like it's going to be a combat. And it is. We have two options, both of which are combat. The top op whichever we choose, we're going to get a progress and we're going to get a training point mm -hmm. and we're going to get a loot each. So whatever we, whichever option we choose, we get that. However, if we choose the top option, we get another training point. So the top option is more dangerous. Let's yeah. have a look at what the top option is. Lead the troll out of town. Stay just out of reach to give the crossbow as good a shot as possible. If we do the top option, uh, we have a fight and the battle queue is made up of baddie points and we add a five point troll baddie. Now, the baddie points is equal to the number of characters multiplied by the day number. So that means the battle queue is made up of four baddie points and you make it up mathematically from there downwards. So that will be four of these. OK, but we are adding a five point troll to that. Now, I don't know whether we add it to the top or the bottom. I think we add it to the top. So we're actually fighting nine points worth of baddies, which is quite dangerous for two characters on the second day. But if we do it, we get an extra training point. 
The special rules are party members cannot deal damage to baddies in this battle. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> From <laughs> what attack, are we dice, doing? or skills. <laughs> At the start of each round, target any baddie and roll five attack dice for the city scroll. Ah, so literally, we are leading the troll out of town. Yes. We are running away while they're following us. Oh, okay. We can't attack them mm. at all. They can attack us. We can't attack them. But at the start of every round, we pick something on the board and we roll these five attack dice. Mm -hmm. And that's how much damage it takes. Okay? Okay. Right, that's okay. option one. Option two is we actually keep the troll here and we fight it. If we do that... It's exactly the same. It's battle queue of body points and add a five point troll. Now I've put the trolls away because the trolls were not needed in this scenario. So they are in the trove chest. I'll get one of those out. <laughs> but each body that enters the battle takes two true damage and the party has surprise. Now, surprise, I think, means we go first in the first round of combat. Surprise is not in the back of the book. Does somebody in the chat remind me what surprise is. It is on it? your you know, the extra... Oh, the Garg. Is it on the Garg? Surprise! After setting any initiative for this battle, move all opposing units to the bottom. So yeah, we go first. So if we choose... So both fights are tough. Right. Hmm. Your choice. Which one do you want? Top, top one is more dangerous, but we do get an extra reward. Meanwhile, I will get a five-point buddy out ready. It's one of those three. One of those three is the troll. Seems pretty hefty for our first. It, it does. For our first fight, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> the top one's really interesting it, it, because we don't actually fight them at all. We just... <laughs> Lead them <laughs> like the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's do the top one then. Okay, we're going to go with the top one. We can always so, reset and start again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to lead the troll out of town. So the battle queue, as I say, is number of characters multiplied by the day numbers. The battle queue is four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Mm -hmm. If it was day three, it would be six, which would be a five and a one. Yeah. Right? So we've got four, and we are adding a five-point troll. Now, does it go to the top, or does it go to the bottom? Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. I think it goes to the top. I'm going to put it at the top. I think it goes to the top. I think normally you have the higher point buddies on top. So this is the battle queue, okay? Yeah, I've got to lose three HP to start. You do. Well. One, two, three. There you go. So we can get rid of that card now. Yeah. That's done. Okay, so here's how you set up the battle queue. Uh, here's just how you set up the thing. And we've got side cam. We've got battle cam already for you. Um, we're going to reveal the first one. So it is a dun, troll dun, dun. sage. He's got six health. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because this is the first monster we revealed, we take the number one chip, put it on there, we put the monster on top, and the initiative is four, so we put it in there set to four, okay? Then you look to see whether it's a melee character or a ranged character, that is a melee character, mm -hmm. so it goes on the melee spot in lane one. So that goes there, okay? Now we reveal the next one. The next one is a kobold tracker. It has two health, uh, because it's number two, we put the number two on there, Put that on there. This is a ranged character, so it goes in lane two on the ranged range. spot, and it's got six initiative. Six initiative. Right. Body number three is a Griffin Yearling. Two health. Body number three, five initiative. God, these are fast. Okay, and that's a melee character in lane three. And then, f not finally, but we have another Kobold another. Tracker which is buddy number four, and that goes there. Now, there's only ever four buddies on the battle mat at any time. So the mm -hmm. fifth buddy, this is, the, this is still the battle queue. I don't believe you reveal this. I think it's still face down. At the end of any round in which there is only three on there, the fourth one comes out. But any new buddy enters at the end of the initiative, unless it's a 20-point buddy or a tyrant, in which case it'll go at the top. So the new one will always come in uh, at the end. By the way, where's that one? That's a six as well. Right, so that's that set up. <laughs> Brett's betting a fiver on the troll. Okay. Uh, and yes, the sound is, unfortunately, both of these microphones, my audio is being picked up on Emily's microphone. 
just as much as it's been picked up on mine, unfortunately. So there is a little bit of an echo, unfortunately. I can't seem to do anything about that. Um, right. So. We start. Now, because you're a melee character, you yeah. start on one of the melee spots. I'm a melee character as well. I start on one of the melee spots. And we roll our initiative die <laughs> to see where we start. I believe you roll initiative die first. Timing of the crossbow. Uh, is at the start of each round. Uh, and I think it would, yeah, so it, it's true damage. Thankfully, the crossbow is true damage because this has hardy uh, mm. and this has thick skin. Um, true damage is basically, it removes that number of chips. It bypasses oh, right, yeah. Bypasses stuff, which is, is very, very handy. So yeah, if you want to roll your initiative die. I've got a four. Two. Oh, so I go there. And you go there. So characters always go before baddies if we if we roll the same thing. Mm -hmm. True damage, page twenty two. Um, yeah. So true damage is the amount of hit points to remove from the target, regardless of defense in play. Only cases, uh, only in cases where skills directly affect true damage, can this number be modified, which is also hardy. Okay. So hardy. Ah, that's a shame. So hardy. Mm -hmm. is a skill which says any turn this unit takes damage to its hit points including true damage total is reduced to one so those are going to be really difficult to get rid of really difficult okay right so we decide where we're going to go um yeah <laughs> Bearing in mind, that's going to go first, then that's going to go, then that's going to go. Now, baddies will always, ranged ones will shoot us wherever we are. They've got whatever range we want. Um, they will go for the nearest one. And if it's a tie, they use their targeting thing. So that one will go for the strongest. That will go for the weak. These three will go for the weakest. Um, we can use that to our knowledge. Melee ones will move two spaces. Uh, cannot move diagonally unless there's a particular icon on the card, which there isn't. Um, so for example, I'm going before this one, because mm -hmm. that is the blue one, which is initiative yeah. four. So if I was to go here, then on my first move, mm. I could, oh, you're probably going to go here, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know whether we're going to be able to get away from that one. But anyway, I think I'm going to go, oh, this is tricky. Hmm. Yeah, because that's going to go before, that's going to go first, then that's going to go. Which they can hit us from anywhere. They can hit us from anywhere. Yeah, ranged is anywhere. So we can't map. avoid them we at all. We can't avoid them at all. And then you said they can move two, two spaces. spaces each? Yeah. So again, See, if I, I was feel... playing solo, this would be great because I'd just stay there. And they can't get me this round. But... Or could he not come closer? Uh, if I was there, he wouldn't be able to get me with two. Right. You can't move diagonally. Oh, okay. So with two movement, he couldn't get me. But, yeah, yeah, the hardy units is tricky. The encounter says that we can't damage them. The encounter says party members cannot deal damage to baddies from attack dice or skills. Now, we can still do other things. We just mm -hmm. cannot damage, we can't deal damage to baddies from attack dice or skills. Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at what your skill dice does. Whenever you decide to use this skill die, it will cost you one dex. You will roll it. You may choose to use it or not. If you don't use it, you put it back. But if you do use it, the effect on the dice, you will see there on every, every dice that you've got, has got, there's the various options, and they are all explained on the left-hand side. So the bones is a part of the game. The reason why the, the game is called Too Many Bones is that a bone, when you roll bones in this game, it's not completely bad. Um, it means you actually get to put it into your backup plan. It yeah. builds up over time. Mm -hmm. And then you can spend the dice in your backup plan to activate your backup plan, which is on the other side of your sheet. And the advantage that this dice has is that whenever you use it in your backup plan, you get the dice back. Right. Okay. So that's one of the things on this dice. The other thing, it looks like it's healing. Yeah, it looks like it's healing. Yes, there's hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Shield bash could be used because it is not attack or a skill. 
Yeah, and poison would work and things like that. If I had toxins, I could use toxins, but I don't have any of those. So yeah, we don't have any of those. So your shield bash is, it, it's a two bones backup plan. Mm -hmm. And the chat is saying that would work. You could use that to deal damage to it because it isn't an attack and it isn't a skill. Skills are specifically yeah. the, the 16 dice there. Okay. Where would you like to start? And we need to remember we've got that because we might need it. I'm thinking we <laughs> probably will. <laughs> well, if you're starting there... I'd probably jump there. Yeah. Just because you're a bit low on health to start with. Right, yeah. okay. So, at the start of the round, we choose a baddie on the board and we get to attack it. Who are we going to shoot? Because if we go with this one, mm -hmm. we might kill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's mm -hmm. only got two health. Yeah. So I'm thinking that one because we can't kill either of these and we can't kill that because it's got six health. So many, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that. Do you want to yeah. roll? This is for the, the crossbows firing from town. Five All attack right. dice and worried. it's true damage. Very worried. Yeah, so that that's like the better roll I've ever seen with five dice. That's yeah. eight damage. Nice. <laughs> but if you have a look at what's on the dice, they're mostly ones with a couple of bones and there's one two. So yeah, there you go. So that's dead. Should have gone for the other one. Should have gone for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so we can take its its dies out. Uh, that was the beginning of the round. We track the rounds with this. We're now on round one. Right. You'll see what happens when we get past five rounds. If we get past five rounds. Okay, so it's now this one. So it's attacking. We're both two away. So it will go for the player with the fewest hit points, which is unfortunately you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has the skill compound. Now, what compound does is it will roll X attack dice equal to the current round number. So as the game goes on, they get they get tougher and tougher. Okay, so it's one attack dice on you from the Kobold Tracker. I think it's going for you. You got one fewer health? You do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's put the side camera on. There you go. So one attack dice on you, and it's one. You take one damage. You just take one of the chips off. Oh right, yeah. Uh, then it's the then it's the green one. So the green one is also attacking you, Gosh. and it's another one damage. Okay, but now it's me. Right. <clears throat> so I was going to run away, but if I do, this thing's then going to hit you. Right. So I don't think I want to run away. In fact, I want them to target me rather than you because you're down to three health. So I've got three dexterity. So I, I spend that three dexterity however I want to spend it. And I think... I'm not sure we just leave the troll and try and get rid of these. So let's have a read of Hardy again. Any turn, this unit takes damage. So not a round, but a turn. Okay. Did I forget my innate? I did. I forgot my innate ability. Oh, and oh. we forgot your innate ability as well. Yes. What's Sorry. my innate ability? Innate abilities. Completely forgot innate abilities. So we need to redo this slightly. Okay. So your character has an innate ability printed on the other side of the character. Other side. Sheet. Mine is, at the start of my turn, I heal one hit point. Right, so... Yours. A shield wall. Yeah. Is that the one we're looking at? That's it. At the start of the battle, I can roll all the defense dice. You have two defense. White dice only. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. roll these two at the start of the battle. Apologies place, for this. And place rolled defense in active slots. Yep. So before the battle started, you should have I rolled I can't those. put anything in the... I can't put bones in the backup. No. Apparently. Okay, and you actually got these. So these go in here. And what this yeah. means is whenever you take damage, you remove these instead. Oh. So actually, put your so two I hit put points back on. Those, those are gone. Thank you very much, chat, for reminding me about that. There you go. Right. So we're in a bit, bit of a better position. <laughs> um, so three days. Can you not kill it the way I killed the other one? Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not quite. No. So I, th I think I'm going to move here. So that's one dex. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got three altogether. So that was one. I am going to attack this 
with one dex. No, I can't because I can't deal damage. No. So I'm basically going there to draw their fire. So I will use I will use one dex for a defense die, and I'll use one dex for my med kit. So there's my three dex: one to move, one to roll my defense die, mm -hmm. one to roll Your my med, med kit. kit. Okay. Okay. So I roll these dice. The defense dice is a one, so that goes in there. The med kit is two healing, which is heal any gear lock for two hit points. Now I don't have to use this because there's a three on here. And there's a one. So if I rolled a one, I'd probably say, nah, I'll tell you what, I won't bother. Because using it exhausts it. So I'm, I'm actually going to do it, because you're down a bit, aren't you? So I'm going to heal you for two. Okay. Or should I? Hmm. Mm. Because in this scenario, we can't actually deal damage from attacking. No. And you don't need the health right now. No. I'm, I'm tempted to not use the two. Yeah. I'll put it back and I'll roll it next time and I might get a three. Okay. Oh, you can attack them if you're looking for bones. Yes, you just can't deal damage to them. That's a good point. We can still attack them and roll attack dice, because if you roll the bones, you can put it in your backup plan. You, oh, yeah, You just yeah. can't deal damage to them. Okay. Good point, Mark. Thank you. So I think we're done. I've used my three decks. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's now this, so That's it doesn't fine. need to move. <laughs> it attacks me. It's got two attack and one defense. So what we do is we roll the two attack and the one defense. Very, very similar to if it was us attacking. Okay. If it had rolled any defense, we would have put it on top and it would have counted in the same way as... But yes. actually, it rolled a bonus. So it's bones. done me one damage. Mm -hmm. So I lose my shield. Mm -hmm. Now it's rolled a bones. Now, most of the time, when, monster, when baddies roll a bones, nothing happens. But this has an ability with a bone symbol on it. So what that means is, when it rolls a bones something happens which is inspire one and i don't think this is going to do anything no the next baddie on the any meter takes their turn immediately and is granted additional attack dice there isn't any other baddies on the any meter but if there was this troll would have inspired one of the other trolls so we're good we got away with that we're all right you'll go Okay. You have three decks. Um, three decks. What do you want to do with that three decks? Well, should I do some to find some bones? Yeah, and defense. And defense. You could do. I mean, you can't attack because you don't have a. No. But you could roll that and two defense. That would be your three decks. Yeah. Because one of the results on that die, or two of them, give you a bonus for the rest of the adventure. Mm. So that would be good. Yeah, mm. if you spend your three decks rolling two defense dice and that. There you go. Right. So if you, you, you can keep that if you want to and put it into your backup plan. So that's, that's two defense. That's there. Yeah. The bones that go in the backup plan, yep. do they have to be from my dice or can they be, they can those? be from there? I think I'd rather just keep that one and re-roll that one later. Okay. Yeah. Because I might get a better. Okay. So that, you might do. Um, yeah, because ideally you want that. Yes. Which then gives you plus one health for the entire adventure. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. You've got that. Now your backup plan with one, you don't have a backup plan with one. You need no, at least two. No, I need two. Now, there's a quirk of the game. Mm -hmm. That is an active defense die. Therefore, you're now only allowed to roll one more. OK, mm -hmm. that is kind of like it's using up one of those. Whilst oh, it's okay. active, it's using up one of those. Yeah. Right. OK. You are done. So at the end of the round, this arrives. It goes on the mm -hmm. lowest number available lane, which is three. It is a dire wolf pup, which has lashback one. Now, lashback means if we hit it in melee, we take that amount of damage back. Uh, always uh, one and five point bodies will arrive at the end of the initiative meter and it's a melee one so it goes there okay that is the end of the first round i think we're done uh and yeah if you wanted to you probably wouldn't but if you really wanted to you can remove that at any time okay so say if if it was a one mm -hmm. and you wanted to re-roll it in the hope of getting a two or another bones you can okay that doesn't count against you only this one mm -hmm. so we go to round two at the start of the round 
we have the crossbows. Who are we going to attack? Based on your roles. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> should we go for that one? And Is he the it. most problematic because of the extra well, dice he bombs? Yeah. The and... problem is these have got hardy. Oh, sorry, they've got compound. Right. This round, they're rolling two dice each. Ah. So, so I, I think we need to get rid of... We should do one of them. We need to get rid of the kobolds. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Wouldn't Pickett's one dice go back to the mat if it was used for bones? This one would, yeah, because it's got the funny symbol on it. Yeah, so if you were to put that in there, yeah. oh, I see what they're saying. Rather than not use it, use it, put it in there, do the shield bash, and then that actually goes back there and we can re roll it again. Oh, yeah. Want to do that? Yeah. So let's have a look at what your shield bash does. I remove all defense, including new rolled active slots and locked slots. Yeah. Deal total damage. So damage. There. Okay. Good idea, chart. Of removed defense yeah. in DMG damage. To damage to target. So basically, you could use those two bones. Right. That would go back to there because it's a special. Yeah. The arrows on. And you would deal that removes this dice mm. and you deal two damage to something without oh. spending decks because it's a backup plan and is it to your target um. yeah so you have to be next to something and it has to be the thing that you're targeting this turn right so i could move into position yeah and hit something for two okay yeah and you could roll okay. another defense die before you did that and mm -hmm. possibly even hit it for more Maybe. Okay, right. Okay, then. Anyway, who are we going to shoot at? Anyway. Um, yeah, these, these are getting tougher and tougher. Them. Every round, they are getting tougher. I think, I think go for that one. Yeah. And then if you shield bash it, that, that will go and get rid of that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, five, five dice on this one here. There, that's enough. It just needed one because it's got hardy. So it can only take one per turn. I think that counts as a turn. Right, so now it is the purple one. Now this is going for me, because I'm the nearest. So it rolls two attack dice on me. Don't have any defense dice. I did have a defense dice, but I lost it. Okay, so I take two damage. Okay. Uh, then the green one attacks, and that's attacking me as well. Did they definitely attack her? Uh... So Scott is saying that is not a turn. That's not a turn. Is it not a turn? Eh. I think it counts as a turn. <laughs> James is in here in the chat. Hi, James. And yeah, the Inspire will now work because there is something there. I'm just going to check ranged baddies and the targeting. Targeting baddies 15, 20. Melee baddies will always pursue the closest one. And then use its targeting. Okay, a ranged baddie. Ah, okay, so it doesn't go for the nearest one. Okay. Ranged baddies. I was, I was just thinking about that thematically. So, unfortunately, the ranged baddies are going for you. Okay. So, it was two damage. It was two damage. Which is that. Oh, yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. you have no choice. Oh, right, that okay. Is that gone? And then the other one attacks you. <laughs> for another two damage. Okay, right, that's those gone. So, the shield bash might still work if you roll, you can roll two defense dice, so you can still do it, and mm -hmm. that will get rid of that one. Uh, me, I've got three decks, I'm just going to do one attack, one defense, and my med kit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to target this. It doesn't actually matter mm -hmm. what I'm targeting, because I can't deal damage to it. No. Okay, well, I've got me three, three healing. Hearts. Nice. So I'm going to exhaust that dice. So you can have three points of healing. I've rolled the bones with that, and I've rolled the one which doesn't do anything because I can't deal it damage. What, me? Yep, you get three healing okay. back. Thank you. Johnny's saying the crossbow is not a turn. So are you saying that it should be dead? Because that. Crossbow? Yeah, the, the crossbow attacks. It says it's at the start of the round, mm -hmm. and it deals true damage. But it specifically says Hardy counts against true damage. 
Oh, what you're saying is any turn this unit takes damage to its hit points. It wasn't a turn. So is, is what you're saying in the chat, should, this, should this be dead? Is that what the chat is saying? That's one of the quirks, one of the things with this game is there's a lot of things that you're like, how does this work together? And thankfully the community support is fantastic. Um, but John is saying the crossbow is not a turn, so is, is the chat saying that this one here should be dead? Yeah, not calling it a turn so it's not hard. It does seem unusual. We're, we're going to play it like this, but as I say, turn on the Klingon subtitles. Um, I, I will get confirmation from Chip Theory Games direct if I can. Yeah, Hardy is per turn, Crossbow is not a turn, so it should be dead. I can see that, but it, it is a bit of a stretch, rules-wise. So, yeah, I'll play it like this, and it might be right, it might be wrong. Who knows? Okay, <laughs> so, uh, that's me done. So it's now this one. So this is melee, so it does go for me. So two attack and a defense. <laughs> So it's done me two damage, which is two damage, unfortunately, and it's now got two, two defense. Yeah, two defense. I take two damage. Okay, that's that done. Now it's you. Right, so I was going to try to go forward and do yeah. the whole shield So bash. one dex to move. One dex to and move. And if you use two dex to roll two defense dice. Yeah. And then you can use your backup plan with not spending any decks. Okay. So as long as you get one defense on, on any of those, oh, yes. you did it. That can go there, mm. that can go there, and you can now spend two bones to activate your shield bash. Okay. So that, so one. that one goes back, that one, that that one, one goes, goes out, back. that one goes back, that slides down. down. You activate your shield bash, it yeah. removes that, Remove that, and it does one damage to that. Done. Okay. Nice. There you go. Out of the way. Yeah. So I, w I will let the chat discuss that rule. We've played it that way. Technically, that might not be the right way of playing it, but who knows? That's that's the way we've played it. Right. Uh, so that's then you done. The last one. Now we have the wolf. So it moves two towards me, and it can't get me. We can choose to move it that way or that way. I'm going to move it that way. Because then we can... Oh no, it hasn't got a path that way. It can't it actually get to me that way, whereas it could get to me this way. So it goes this way. Okay. But it doesn't attack. If it had any defence mm -hmm. die, we would still roll the defence die now. Something that I always forget. End of the round. We go to round three. We've got five attack dice again. <laughs> what are we going to go for? Um... Well, are we doing... This is getting bad, isn't it? Well, but but I mean, this one we might be able to get rid of? That one we might be able to get rid of with your shield bash again. Mm. And that is getting tougher and tougher. That is going to be three attack dice this round. Yes. So, yeah. I think yeah. go for the go for that one. Okay. And if we were playing the rules technically as the chat is suggesting, then this should actually kill it. But it does seem a little odd. Okay, so we've, we've done one damage, that's fine. Okay, and it's going next, and it's going for me, because I'm the lowest on health, and it's dealing three dice damage to me. Gulp. Oh, actually, I should have healed one at the start of my turn. My innate ability, I forgot. I should have one more. Ah, does that... That's my ability, is I heal one at the start of each turn, each of my turns. Okay, it's hit me for two damage, that's all right, and it rolled the bones, which for it doesn't do anything. So two damage. Okay. Okay. Now it's me. <laughs> yes. So I get one hit point back. <laughs> right, I can't deal any damage to it. So... I, I, I think I just stay where I am. I mean, I could use this... <laughs> Oh yeah, what was that to get about again? This back. Oh. It unexhausts the dice. So um you've exhausted it. This is exhausted, it can't be used again this combat. But if I use this, okay. I can get it back. 
that worth doing? I'm, I'm not sure. Because I'm hoping you're going to be able to shield bash that one. And then I'm hoping in the next couple of rounds, we're going to get rid of these. So no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save that. So I am just going to use one attack and one de uh, defense. And I'm going to attack the troll just, just for a laugh. Okay, I've done two damage, which does nothing. I got one point of defense. That's me done. So now it's the troll. The troll attacks me. So it doesn't roll its defense dice because its defense dice is already on there. Yeah. Okay, if that yeah, defense yeah. dice wasn't there, it would roll it. Please, not bones. Okay, it's done me two damage. So that's that one. And one off. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. We're doing all right. Side cam's on. Your go. So do I do my innate thing first? That was just at the start of combat. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yours is a okay. one-off at the start of combat. Mine uh, is at the start of each turn. Okay. So um, I need to roll some defense dice. Yeah. So that we can see if we can get some extra bones. Try and get another shield And potentially bash. do the shield bash. Yeah. Okay. There's the defense so dice there. Two defense dice. Thank you. So you want... Bones. One bone. Yeah. And one shield. That's specific, isn't it? Yeah. For two dice. Yeah. Oh, no, hang on. No. You've got this. Yes. Oh, but you've only got two. You could roll those two, or you could roll one of those and one of those. That has a four in six chance of being a bone. That, the defense dice, has a four in six chance of being a shield. Right, so one of so each. So mathematically, maybe. I think one of each is probably the best thing to do. Okay. 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 So no, but you got a bones which you can put in there. I got a bones. But you did get that. I did get that. So you can lock that into here. Yeah. And because it's got the infinity mm. on, it gives you one health for the entire game from this point onwards. And that die stays there. Nice. I think that's how it works. That's what I read. Constant. Oh, no, 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 no. No. This is constant regeneration. At the start of your turn, heal oh. for one. Last for the entire... It's like me. You become, you become oh, me. Oh, okay. You heal for one at the start of it. If you want to lock it in there, which you probably do. Yeah, yeah. Probably do. Right, so that's locked. Now, because you're playing on the easiest difficulty mode, even if you die, these dice stay. On the difficulty mode I'm playing on, if I die, my locked dice go. So that's there permanently for you. Doesn't matter. We're not going to die. Gonna... No, no, no. We're not going to die. <laughs> right. So you're done. But now we have the dire wolf pup, which goes for me, because I'm the nearest, and it's attacking me with one die, which is okay. I'm taking one damage. So apparently that that Oops. that crossbow and hardy ruling has been asked officially, and ruled on BGG. So we we did play it incorrectly if you want to go with the rules as written um, but it is a bit quirky <laughs> it is a bit quirky <laughs> right uh, we're done round four so crossbows now we'll get rid of it yeah now i won't roll the right thing i hope so yeah that's fine yeah. Okay. okay so that's gone uh so that's out so now it's me so i'm going to attack the troll <laughs> one attack one defense I'm How just... are we going to get rid of the troll if we can't really attack it? I don't think the whole... The crossbow, the five die. It doesn't have hardy. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh, that's good. Two defense. That's me done. So now it's the troll. So the troll hits me. Two damage, which removes that. And now it's you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So rolling defense in the hope that we will get a shield. Yeah, I think if you move there. Yeah. And uh, roll two defense die. Mm -hmm. Then you might be able to do a shield dice. I mean, you don't have to. You could just save the bones up. Because once you get to six bones, you become in eight plus one and you get your super, super special ability. Which super, is, super duper. Which is there in eight plus one. 
I can also put rolled defense dice in locked slots, even during battle. Okay. Yeah, in 8 plus 1, in all of my games this year, I've done it once. Okay. Okay, so in 8 plus 1 is like super leveling up, but it's really hard to do. So, so we if won't you can overly do it, focus on that. Great. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. a lot of shields. A lot of shields. So you've got three, three active defense. Uh, the Dire Wolf Pup is going for me <laughs> because I'm the weakest. Did I heal one at the start of my turn? No. I don't think I did, did I? I think I no. forgot my healing. Oh, did you forget your healing as well? What healing? Oh, yes. That's new, isn't it? Yeah, it's new. There you go. Thank you. We both forgot our healing. It's hit me for one. There you go. Let's take it off again. And that's it. End of the round. So round five. Crossbow bolts of doom. Who are we going to shoot? Who do you think we should shoot? I think the troll. Yeah. Because if you get lucky, we kill it. Yeah. Because it's true damage. Yeah. So it bypasses thick skin and the defense. Uh, you can reduce body shields with attacks. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you very much. So when I hit it for one, although I didn't damage it, I did reduce its shield. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Yep. Okay, nice. Okay. Oh. Unfortunately, lots of bones, but it is two damage. We'll get it next time. Okay. Right. So my go. Uh, I am going to use one attack and one defense and attack the troll. Oops. Mm. So I've got one defense and I've rolled the bones, which I'll go in there. Now, my backup plan of two mm. bones is... Oh, and I get a health at the start of my turn. I can heal a gear lock for one hit point. I don't think I want to. No, because my needle jab is stick a target for two damage, which isn't a skill. So I could actually use needle jab to deal it damage. Yeah, save it then. If I get the next one. Yeah, that's me done. Yeah. So now it's the troll. So the troll attacks me. Oh, no, the, yeah, the troll attacks me because I'm the nearest. If if that was there, the troll would be attacking you because the troll's got the different icon on. Yeah. Okay. Dealt me two damage. So mm. that's one off there and one off there. Okay, now it's you. This is the toughest day two fight I think I've ever had. <laughs> really? <laughs> but the rewards are going to be amazing for this. Well, if we make it. If we make it. Don't forget we've got that as well, if we if we got desperate. But I think we're okay. Yeah. Wait till I explain what happened in round six. Oh. Oh, your go. Start of your turn. You regenerate. Okay. It's going to and be then amazing, we that. Shield bash. Yeah. You're just going to do it now? Well. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, so two bones, well. three shields, two this bones. is gone. You haven't actually spent any decks yet, so you can now... No. So now I could roll? You could move two and attack. Yeah, or you could move... Yeah, yeah I'll move two. You could move two. Move two. And roll a defence. Yeah. 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 One. Hey, Matt is in the chat. Good to see you, Matt. That's nice. And he, he has found the reply from Adam Carlson, who's one of the designers of the game, and says that Hardy does not apply if it's not anybody's turn. So we did play that wrong. Okay. That That's fine, but it is useful to know. And thank you very much for yeah. people in the chat for pointing that out to me. It just felt really wrong. But yeah, Matt has confirmed official answer. Um, oh, backup plan is after rolling dice. Oh, okay. So you can't have done that. Sorry. All right, okay. Rolling Sorry. dice would have happened Before. first. And because you had two dice in there, yes, that means that was effectively zero. Mm. So what you could have done is you you could have rolled an attack, an attack dice, yeah, because you might get a bones. Oh yeah. So you move two, roll okay. the attack dice, and then use the backup plan. Yeah. So the bones goes in there, and then you and use then those two bones and it slides down. Slides down. There you go. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're done. So we go to round six. So round six and onwards is called a fatigue round. 
Don't like what, this symbol. What happens is at the start of every fatigue round, everything takes one true damage. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Okay. So well, eventually good. the battle will come to an end. Now we have the crossbows. Yes. So we're about to kill it. Hopefully. Absolutely. That's six damage. It's gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we take these off. We put them on here. We do not automatically heal. Uh, any uh, bones that you've got in mm. your backup plan, well, any skills that you've got come back, except for that one, because it's infinity. I'm pretty sure that backup plan, dice in backup plans um, come back at the end. I don't think they roll over to the next round. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't roll over. Yeah, they must be removed at the end of the battle or if you're KO'd. Right, okay, so dice in backup plan disappear. Um, we can get rid of those, we can get rid of that, we can put that back. And then we now get our rewards. Yes. So we get two training points, a progress point, and a loot each. So I'll put the progress points with the two. Have a loot. <laughs> Got a throwing axe. Okay, I have a fortunate discovery. So Ooh. what that means is that when I use it, I select one of my consumable dice, and I, and I get it. I'm going to keep that and have a look in a minute. And we get two training points. Yes, locked are kept. So the locked dice are kept, but everything else goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two training points. Um, I'm going to look at my sheet. Yeah. So I'm going to... See, we're not fighting trolls. We did fight a troll then, but there are no other trolls in this scenario. Mm. Trolls have an ability called Thick Skin. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to poison. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. If we were fighting more trolls, I might take toxins because poison's really good against things with Thick Skin. But because we're not, I might not do that. I think I'm going to go for nutrients. So my first training point is to buy skill dice number five. And my second training point is I think I'm going to buy another defense. I'm going to buy another defense. So whenever you buy another defense, you have to make a check. You have to roll a number of defense dice equal to your current defense. And if you roll a bones, you can't have it. So I didn't roll the bones, which means I can have it. So that's my two training points spent. And I will start looking at my fortunate discoveries. Okay, that could be useful. Okay, so I'm thinking mm -hmm. I will get some confidence, which is that one. Right. And an attack. Okay, so if you want to get an attack, yeah, you need to roll the number of attack dice equal to your current stat, and yeah. if you roll a bones, you can't have it. You didn't, so you can have another attack. Right, so you've got two attack, two defense, three dexterity. Mm -hmm. There you go. We are done. So now we go to the Garg. He's not there. Where have I put the Garg again? Here's the Garg. Um, so that was the encounter. That's dividing the spoils, applying training points, logging of progress. Now we go to recovery. Rest. So trade loot with party if we wanted to trade stuff around. Uh, make a lock picking attempt and then individual options. So my individual option is I'm going to rest and recover, which means I restore back to full. Now you can do the same if you wanted to, or instead you could scout. Or you could search for better loot. If you didn't want your throwing axe, you could throw it away to try and find something better. What does it do? 
Um, it says during your turn, roll one attack die and deal its damage to any unit on the battle map. Okay. So, Doesn't yeah. cost dexterity. No, no dexterity, you just throw it throw and it. it hits something. Could be great. Yeah. So let's just do the exploring. Yeah. Searching. Yeah. So thing. you roll a d6. And uh, yeah, Brian, Brian is right. I should have probably rolled this first before buying this. Oh, yeah. Because then if that failed, I could have bought this. Yeah. And then I could have spent my second one on trying to buy that. Yeah. Yes. What have you rolled? Four. Four. So you can look at that if you want to. Or you can mm. look at that. I possibly look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are some really nasty five point baddies. Okay. What is it? It's a Griffin Howler. So it's got flight, which we know how that works. It's got five initiative. I think based on the fact that we put the other one to the bottom that had flight and five initiative, I think put that one to the bottom. It's got dive, which means if it attacks us from flight, it does extra damage. And it's got signal one, which means it's going to bring in another baddie at the end oh. of the first round. Because it makes such a noise, somebody goes, oh, what's that? Now, I okay. think put that one to the bottom. Okay, day three. Oh, we can find day, it. Day three, <laughs> and we have the final of the opening cards. Crossing the Cibron again. So this is a river. Same river, same crossing, same Molnir trader, waiting to take advantage of our need. It's as if the beginning of this journey has been on repeat for ages. Just fate have no taste for variety. Preparing to tuck ears we, and walk like a commoner for the umpteenth time, fate at least decides to change things up. An enormous tentacle reaches up from the river and pulls the Molnor trader into the Cibron. Saving its life might yield some rewards, but its ferry is right there for the taking. So we have a choice, either non-combat or combat. If we choose the non-combat, mm -hmm. uh, see you Molnor, it's been real annoying. You take the ferry across and watch with morbid curiosity as the Molnor is devoured by a hideous legendary guardian of the Cibron, who will definitely not make an appearance in a future adventure. That would be an obvious example of writing completely devoid of nuance. We succeed, and we shuffle a special encounter. Mo no, just kidding. Okay, so that that's that's a play on something from the original game. The river is where the Molnor traders are, um, but basically that's a success. We get no special rewards, but we've passed it. We get one progress point, one training point, and a lootage. All oh, right. Or oh. we decide to rescue the poor sap. We did have some fun times together. It wasn't all bad. We have a fight. The battle queue is going to be six. But at the start of each round, we roll a d6. On a 1 to 3, Tentacle immediately lashes the strongest unit on the battle map for 1 true damage. On a 4 to 6, at the end of this round, Tentacle pulls the weakest unit on the battle map under immediate defeat or knockout. But if we succeed on that, we get another training point and another loot. Sounds dangerous, but it's your, it's your call. If we do the fight, it will be that and that. It will only be two enemy units. But at the start of each round, we roll a d6. On a one to three, the strongest unit takes a damage. On a four to six, at the end of the round, the weakest unit is immediately defeated. Now, the weakest unit, I'm hoping, is not going to be us. Because we've actually got quite a lot of health. What would you do in the chat? Which one would you uh, would you do? And yeah, bonus points for Paul because I did put this face up. Yeah. I don't think we're going to go through them, but I was wondering if anybody noticed that. You are supposed to put them back face down. Which one do you want to do? What is the chat saying? The chat is not giving any advice. Oh, Richie's saying the second one. So R Richie's saying go for it. <laughs> Chris is saying fight. John's saying fight as well. Well, there you go. It's your call, but the chat is saying. It sounds like we got to go fight. We go for the it? fight. Okay, so we are going to rescue the Molnir trader. <laughs> so we have a battle queue made up of six. Do you want to roll your defense die and do your your pre battle setup thing because of your innate ability? You roll your two defense line, you pop them in there. I will set this up. We have a dire wolf. It's really nasty. Mm. 
What have you rolled? Two shields. Okay, so we have a direwolf melee lane one. It's got six health. Mm. Goes on initiative four, uh, and it's got lashback two. So if you hit it in melee, you take two damage back. We also have a dragon hatchling, which has engulf, which we could use to our advantage. So whenever it attacks us, everything adjacent to us takes half damage. It's basically like dragon breath. This is there. Okay, so do you want to roll your initiative die? Oh, that's on initiative six. I'm on three. Five. Five, so you go there. Okay, where are we going to start? So we're both melee characters, so we have to start on the melee line. The dragon hatching is going for the weakest person, and the dire wolf is also going for the weakest person. You should go further away then. No? Yeah, I mean, you've got more defence than me, and I can heal you. But... Yeah, I mean, what, are you thinking you start there and I start here? Maybe. Yeah, that works. Because then you don't have to spend any of your, de your decks on movement. Yeah. You can just you can just hit it from where you are, because you're going before it. Mm. Oh, yes. But yes, lashback two. Any turn this unit is damaged by an adjacent opposing unit, this unit will then deal that damage back so long as it was not defeated. So if you hit it and defeat it, you won't take the two damage back. Direwolf right. is very, very, very bad. Yes, it's got four okay. attack dice. Ah. Oh. Yeah, four attack mm. dice is very, very nasty. Where's all of our crossbow friends when we need them? Should we use the axes on it? Very possibly, but also that dragon hatchling. That could be it. That could be quite easily axed. I mean, it's only got one attack dice. Yeah, so we're not so, so yeah, fast. Yeah, engulf is... All damage rolled also hits all units adjacent to target, including self, as well as triggers reaction skills. Oh, it's not even half damage, it's full damage. So when that attacks, mm. and it's going to attack me. Mm. Oh, actually, hang on, hang on. Maybe we'll want to do this another way around. That's going first because it's on six initiative. Mm -hmm. It's going to attack me because mm. I'm the weakest, mm. and you're going to take a damage as well. Because you're next right. to me. If... If I go... If we did that... Yeah. Now, that's not ideal for your starting position. In fact, we're both going to heal. We both heal at the start of our turns. So it doesn't... Because we're both currently on full, aren't we? Um, Are you on eight? Mm, I think I'm one less. Um, okay. I think one health is not going to matter because you've got your regeneration no. up. I think... But yeah, otherwise we could use that engulf to our advantage. So I think for the first round, we're both going to take a damage from the engulf. But then I'm going to move to there. And from that point on, it's going to hit me every round and it's going to deal damage. To the to, to direwolf as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what we do. It's a shame we can't position ourselves so it hits us and yeah. straight well, away. Well, we, we could, but that would be that. Right. Hmm. But then you'd have to spend a dex, and and I think me being there is better, so that it then engulfs itself every turn. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with that. Okay. So round one. Round one. It goes. It attacks me. Got one attack dice. Oh, and triggers reaction skill. So if the engulf is next to the dire wolf, it will lash back. Yeah, which is which is bonkers. <laughs> The lashback should only work uh, if it's damaged by an adjacent opposing unit. So it can't, the, the dire wolf can't lash back against the dragon hatchling. Two damage. Okay, so we both take two damage. That's unfortunate. Mm. Did it roll the two? Okay. Uh, but it's your go. So at the start mm. of your go, you get yeah. a health from your regeneration. Okay, you got okay. three decks. You can't roll any defense dice. Cause, well, you can. You can remove them if you wanted to re-roll them. Yeah. Um, Isn't it best just to roll some? Well, because there's a two on these dice. 
and you've got three decks. So you might want to do... Oh, you've got this as well. I don't know what that does. Oh, yes. It's a load of shields. Okay, right. Which go where? Mostly. I don't know. So if you look next to the Only... dice, uh, Is it, it will that say... Kind? Yeah, I think it's that one. It's uh, got various letters. Prevents damage the shield. Yeah, but if you look to... next to it, oh, I'll right, just yeah. put it on camera so people yeah, can see. If you look next to it here, it's got A, which means you can put it in your active slot. Ah. A, A, which means you can put it in an ally's active slot. Oh. And it acts as a counter, so it ticks down. So anything that says AA can be used on an ally. So that's quite useful. Yeah. But yeah, there's your three decks. Three decks. Two attack and one special dice. And you're targeting the die wolf. Yes. Okay. So you've done it one damage. Armor. You've rolled the bones, which goes into your backup Bone. plan. And you can use that die if you want to. Or you can put it back. Uh put it back yeah we kind of we want to so we want to. you've dealt one damage to it but you take two back now does that two back <laughs> come off defense yeah so those yeah. those go okay uh did you roll the six side six dice oh no we didn't thank you no. we forgot start of the round we should have rolled a d6 yeah it is a five oh. So at the end of this round, the tentacle is going to pull, over, pull under the weakest unit on the battle map. It's just going to be that. That's fine. Okay. There you go. Fine. Uh, so that's you done. Yeah. Well, I hope it's that. It might I be I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I hope it is. Right. So I'll let you roll this then. Yeah, this is... A me. <laughs> uh, Four. Yeah, this might, this might have gone badly wrong. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh well, we're learning. Put the six in the uni meter. That's a good idea. Yeah, so we know at the end of the round something's happening. Do you... We've got the healing. Worst case, we've got the healing. Yeah, okay. So, four attack dice on you. You take five damage. Mm. Gulp. Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. What you want? One. Mm. Right, okay. So Emily's down to one health. Which means at the end of this round you're going to get pulled under. Um, but that's that's the wolf done. So now Should it's have let him drown. <laughs> 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 yeah, the chat was advising us to uh, I think they want to us save to him. Die, I think really. they do. Right, okay. So I've got I've got three decks. Yeah. And I can do some fancy stuff. Yeah. Um I can use my med kit for one. I can use my nutrients for another. Mm -hmm. And then I can use my, my defense dice. defense for another. Yeah. So there's my, oh, no, no, no. I'm moving to there. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Although that's going to get dragged under at the end. So there's actually no point in me doing that now. Because if you get dragged under, it's game over anyway. Mm. Well, it's not game over. It's, it's yeah. I think I have to do this and just try and heal you for as much you as possible. You could use your loot card too. I can, yeah. Saying. Yeah, I do have my fortunate discovery. I heal one at the start of my turn. Now that's you. That's me. So I heal one for my innate ability. So I've got fortunate yeah. discovery. I can use this to select one of my consumable dice, which I've not looked at, but let's have a look. One of them is, is liquid life. Which revives a chaotic gear lock. If this die is in an active slot, it triggers automatically. Ah. Okay, right. Nice. Okay, so. Question is. Am I going to get... I'm, I'm going to get at least... No, that could be bad. What if it's tied? Weakest unit on battle map. I guess if it's tied, we choose. Is that right? If uh, if Pickett is on three and the Dragon Hatchling is on three, which is the weakest unit on the battle map? So all I need is two points of healing. Mm. Which I'm, I'm... I'd be unlucky if I didn't get it. 
What does that do? What does that do? Someone's saying a tie is you choose, okay. George. That's good. Saying. We roll a heel. Okay. Oh, lots of people are saying. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to keep the fortunate discovery for now. Yeah, I'm just going to roll these and see what happens. I'm hoping this is going to be okay. That is the worst result possible. That's that's not okay. So sorry, <laughs> it's, it's all gone. Horribly wrong. That, that is terrible. There's only a one on there. I needed a two. Oh dear, 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 dear. What does this one do then? Something that nice? That gets me a loot, I think. Which is of no use whatsoever. Immediately oh. draw one loot card. That's not what I wanted at all. Yeah. That's gone very bad. Okay, so I draw the loot card. Oh, it's fresh bog meat. We like that. In battle, heal yourself for five and then add a poison two effect and eye to your gear lock. Right, now. We've still got this. Yeah. How many does it heal? Heal entire party for two hit points each when used. So that could be the backup plan. Okay. Throwing axe. Emily's loot card from day two. Yeah. Uh, day one, I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think it might have been day two. Day one, yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, Paul's die rolling skills. Yeah, it was uh, it was Emily's loot card from day one. So we can use it. Because that's only going to heal me, which <laughs> is no use. Mm -hmm. um, they should be both exhausted. Uh, oh, no, I've got one point of healing here, haven't I? Well, I will put the, um, if you're going to use that, I will not use that. No. Yes. So as we're in a battle, we can only heal. Two each. Two each. Yeah. yeah. So you go up for two. So this is the special thing that we got when yeah. we left. And then we get rid. One, two, I'll take three, it. Four, five, six. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, that's gone. Uh, can Paul use it if Emily is holding it? It says it's the whole party. Is the, yeah, well, the question is, can you use a loot card when it's not your turn? Oh. That is the question. Uh, loot it's... area, 14. When a gear lock gains loot, they can store it. Each gear lock can hold up to four. Uh, we'll explain on page 21. Turn a loot card with multiple uses to show it's been used. After fully using it, discard it. Unless stated otherwise, outside of battle, loot can be used or discarded at any time. Oh. During battle, if not specified otherwise, loot must be used on your turn. Oh, bummer, so no. Whoops, eh? Okay, so it can only be used on your turn. And would you have used it on your turn? You probably wouldn't have done, would you? Um. Don't think you would have done. Okay, so we are we are in big trouble <laughs> because it is now the end of the round, and unfortunately, you get tentacled underneath. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Right, let's just undo slightly because I knew you were going to be able to do that, <laughs> mm -hmm. which would put you on three as the real backup plan. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you weren't able to do that. then I wouldn't have rolled the defense dice and I would have used... So we are doing a slight undo because I thought we were going to be able to use that. So on my turn, instead of rolling that, that and that, mm -hmm. I would have used the fortunate discovery to find some liquid life and then I would have rolled the liquid life. This is what I would have done, okay, which was a three. And then with the liquid life, I would have... Uh, slotted that into your active slot. I believe that's what you can do. AA, place in an ally's active slot. Okay? Which means at the end of the round, when you get knocked out, 
you come back to life with three health. It triggers automatically if unit would be KO'd to prevent KO and set hit points to three. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So I am going to die? You're not going to die. Okay. Because now at the end of the round, we choose that one to get gotted. Okay. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, so it was you. You got KO'd, but then because of the liquid life, you got brought back to life. Okay. So. Just to be clear, I did die. You did die, but then you came back to life. Okay. Because no, of, no, no. of this thing that I gave you. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Okay. So yeah. So now we know loot can only be used on your turn. That's what we did. End of the round. Round two. We're going to roll at the start of the round for the mm. thing. Mm, for something. For yeah. something. And it's a one. That sounds better. So tentacle immediately lashes the strongest unit on the battle map. Oh. It's oh, tied. No. So it's that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for one true damage. Nice. Mm. Okay, done. Uh, it is now that. That's turn. And I didn't move. So that was bad. But it's going for you. <laughs> it's going for you, and it's got engulf. It rolled the bones, oh. which is no, no damage. Is that all right? Yes, yeah. it's all right. Nice. And now it's you. You heal one. Yep. Now remember, this has got lashback <laughs> two. So, but you've got to, you've got to hit it. I mean, I've got to, yeah. haven't I? I mean, I can't <laughs> yeah. just not hit you've it. You've got to hit it. Yeah. So, to attack and a defense. Yeah. So the two attack and a defense, or to attack that? and that one, to attack and this one, to yeah. attack and that one. Not that it's. Well, that's three damage. Three oh, damage. One more and it wouldn't have lashed back. Oh, got it. So three damage. You take two back. Oh, which depends on what you're doing with that. That seems very weak. If that is just... It does. Oh, but there are some threes. There are, there are ones and twos on there. On this one, yeah. It's because you can put it on a... Yeah, treat the defense when active on picket or shield bash and shield shock. So you can slot it in either your active slot or my active slot. Mm. It's just it's like an extra defense, basically, that isn't a defense. I think that's how it is. That's a very good point. If Pickett died and came back to life, would he come back at the top of the inny right? But you didn't you didn't die. You you were knocked out and you came back. It's a good question. Yeah, it prevents the KO, says George. But yeah, it is a good question. Because if uh, if something does leave and come back, gear locks go to the top of the initiative track. Oh. Gear locks, tyrants, and 20 point baddies go to the top, ones and fives go to the bottom. But yes, mm -hmm. it actually prevented the KO. So yeah, that die is really good when you've got lots of defense because it, it acts as an extra defense die. Um, but right now it's the same no. as just a defense die. So maybe I'll use it and use it now. Yeah. So that. So it, go, it goes here. It never goes back there. Oh, no, no, it doesn't it. go back. It, it goes, goes back there. So that prevents and one of the one of back. them, and just to get rid of one. one. Okay, that's you done. So now it is that, and it attacks you for four dice. Okay. So this might be uh, problem. <laughs> this might be good night. Should we have drunk? Um. Well, I'll let you do it now if you wanted to, but I mean, is four dice going to kill you anyway? I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay now if you go because you've almost killed it. Okay. Yeah, three damage. So you are now KO'd. So again, if we were playing on heroic, you would lose that die. Okay. Right, so that's that done. Now it's me. And I'm going to move one. And I'm going to have one attack and one defense. And I'm going to target the dire wolf mm -hmm. and hope I get one damage. I got one damage, which means it's dead and it doesn't retaliate. It doesn't lash back. Wrong way around. Okay. Done. End of the round. So we now go to round three. We roll this dice. 
to okay. four. So at the end of the round, the weakest thing on the mat is going to get eliminated. Yep. Oh, I think I forgot to heal at the start of my round. Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. So it attacks with engulf. So it hits itself. One damage to me, which and one that. damage to one it. damage to it. And then on my turn, I heal for one. Am I at full? I'm at full. Um, so I'm just going to do one attack and two defense to try and roll some bones. Yes, I need. I need. I need to put something to remind me that I heal one. Didn't get any bones, but that's it. End of the round. It gets. It gets gotted. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. End of the battle. We succeeded. Just that goes. Oh no, that's a consumable. So that's that's gone. Back in my yeah, it's drunk. Um, hence the name consumable. So you get your dice back. That comes back. Oh that right. Disappears. Um, <laughs> come off. Let's come off. We're back to round one, and we get the rewards. Yes. So, lots of lots of nice juicy rewards. We get two training points, two loot, and a progress point. Okay, what we got? Mixed berries. Did Emily heal at the start of her turn? I can't remember. Heal one. Did you heal one at the start of your turn? I think you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Emily did, yeah. Pretty sure. Well, I've got a lock pick. Okay. Useful when we come across anything that needs picking. If we do, we yeah. might not. And some mixed berries that I can heal out of battle for five. Okay. HP. Nice. Or three in battle. So I've got healing, healing, healing. Yeah. Oh, nice. Quite a bit of healing, re rolling. All good. Right, we've got two training points. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy. Um, I'm going to buy another health. With one training point. And I am going to buy toxins, I think. Yeah, I'm going to buy toxins with my second training point. So George is reminding us that we do need to buy extra decks, yes. Yes, I was wondering about that. Oh, ignore ignore the description, Heather. Very sorry. It does say uh, yeah, it does say that it's a solo playthrough in the description. Mm. I will I will edit that while uh, while Emily's deciding which because um, the description was copied from a previous video. There you go. Description has now been fixed. Sorted. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts? Well, I'm thinking about an extra dex and a defense. Okay. Yeah, so try and go for the defense, defense first. Defense first. So you have to roll two defense dice. If you roll the bones, you can't spend that training point on dex. You haven't, so you can have an extra dex. Uh, sorry, an extra defense. Defense. And then extra dex is automatic. You just pop that up. To two. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Okay, right. So um, that's the training points done. That's the progress points done. Mm. That's the loot done. Mm -hmm. That is the end of day three. We now go into the uh, the recovery step. I guess you are yeah. recovering, recovering back to full health. So you get eight health. One, two, three, oh. four, five, six, seven. Oh. Got it. Eight. Uh, whereas I'm already on full health, so I'm going to scout. Or I could try and go for better loot. Um, no, I'm going to keep my reflex powder because that allows me to re-roll dice. The bog meat, as we all know, the bog meat is amazing because I've used them in a previous game. I heal for five, but then I get a poison two. So I basically, I heal for five, 
but then on the on the next turn I take two damage, and then on the next turn I take one damage because it was disagreed with me. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna scout. I rolled a one, so I'm having a look at this one, and it is break. Now I don't like break. Break is bad. Why? Any time you deal damage to it with an attack dice, the attack dice gets exhausted. If you were to hit it for two dice, yeah. you would deal damage to it, but then those two attack dice would go there, which means you then have no more attack mm. dice for the rest mm. of that encounter. Oh my okay, god. Break is really bad, but does sound bad. there are things that we can do around So does that it. mean like a shield bash? Would shield still bash, be able I to think, do. would be fine. Um, yeah, it specifically example, is... Any attack dice used to reduce this unit's hit points must be exhausted. So there's various other ways you can deal damage to it. Yeah, shield bash trumps break. Okay. Uh, and I've got various things that I can do. So I think I'm going to leave it there because there's worse things than that. Okay, day four. So all of the, the starting three ones have gone. We're now on to... It's not a blue card. So at some point now we could meet this card specific to Mulmesh. A chance encounter. Uh, so we're on to cards from the base set now. You know you are travel weary when sounds of the wilderness, zoo, sundry, war cries, or even companion babble, companion babble eventually turns into indiscernible noise. So you can imagine our surprise when, after a day of travelling with danger at every bend, we hear actual musical notes filling the air, calling us from a clearing just ahead. After checking ourselves for signs of delirium and finding ourselves sane, our party picks up the pace the enticement of a hearty meal and friendly trade being too much to ignore. Thankfully, unlike a few previous bad experiences, the notes do not disappoint, and we find ourselves amongst a group of traders who offer us friendship and a challenge. So both of the options are non-combat. We can either do a lockpick challenge. You open it, you keep it. Yeah. Cycle through the trove loot deck until you spot a chest with at least one lock of five difficulty. Each gear lock gets to perform a lock pick attempt. Locks opened by one gear lock stay open for the next. Party must unlock trove loot to successfully complete this encounter. Got okay. to be a five or more, has it? Yeah, and if we oh, succeed on that, then we get a loot each and we get a trove loot. We, okay. we get the trove loot. <laughs> okay, these are really powerful items, but you've got to unlock them. Alternatively, dangerous darts again. Each gear lock must compete in a dangerous darts challenge, which is a side game, which is explained somewhere, either in the rule book or somewhere else. I can't remember where it's explained, but it's a separate game. <laughs> At least one gear lock must win for party to gain progress. Each winner also gains one loot. Okay, so either way, we are not getting the one progress unless we succeed in either of those. So the first option is a lock picking challenge which means we would go through this deck until we find a chest that has at least one lock with five difficulty. Now, why were you saying that's not... Um, it's oh, just right. mine is during your thing. It's You can bypass a lock of four right. okay. or less, so it doesn't help, unfortunately. Okay. So lock picking is a whole extra mini game <laughs> that you might... I didn't see it until I was in my, my fourth game, but it involves rolling these lock picking dice, right. and it's a separate mini game. Okay. Um, and we've got to unlock the three locks that are on there. Now, yeah. thankfully, it says that each of us gets to perform a lockpick attempt, and any locks opened by one of us stays open for the next. Mm -hmm. But we have to unlock it to successfully complete the encounter. The other option is Dangerous Darts. As I say, Dangerous Darts is a, is a side game, which is here. Uh, each player and opponent starts with 10 hit points, using only attack dice, defense dice, or status effect dice. Players must choose three dice, but no more than two of any kind. You'll roll the same dice each turn. Um, basically, you're throwing darts. Once oh, dice right, are okay. chosen, the game begins with your opponent rolling their three dice. Take turns rolling available dice. Apply roll defense to self. You're throwing darts at each other, I think. Um, oh, okay. Remove all of your opponent's hit points to win. So, yeah. Dangerous darts are worse than sharp sticks. Been Never told seen we've got to win. go up on... Oh yeah, we're on day four. Thank you. Day four. <laughs> so which one do you want to do? Do you want to try the lockpick challenge or the dangerous darts? I'm thinking the lockpick because okay. that has bigger potential. It bigger does. Rewards. It does. Okay. 
So we cycle through the Trove Loot deck. So again, this is the Trove Loot deck. You might not use this in games. Uh, I think, yeah, in less than half of the games I've played, I've used this deck. So there's three locks printed on it with numbers, and we're going to cycle through it until we find one with at least a difficulty five lock. We found one. That one. That is the Trove Loot that we have to pick. Okay. So he's got three locks on it, a three, three, and a six. Um, oh, so could we use we this one on that. one of them? Yeah, so each oh, gear lock good. gets to perform a lock pick attempt. Right. And any locks opened by one gear lock stay open for the next. So here's how a lock picking attempt works. Um, we can put this here. Okay. So Mark is saying that the absolute efficiency we have a 47% chance of winning. Okay, right. So we might have gone with the right, the right one. So do you want to make the first lock picking attempt? Yeah. Okay, and do you want to use the mech pick? <laughs> I think we might seems, as well. It's, we've got the mech pick, we might as well. So yeah. during your lock picking attempt, you may bypass a lock of four or less without using action mm. dice. Right, so that's mm. gone. Mm -hmm. We have bypassed the first one. Yep, so we've so got the first one. little thing on there. Right, so now mm. what you do is you roll those three dice. Four. Four dice. Yeah. Even, yeah. There you go, so you roll those four. Uh, we're looking for 3T. 3T. Yeah. If you get Specific. 3T, you've done it. Right. You've not got any Ts, no. but you have rolled that. And that icon means that you can re-roll re one of the other die and that die. Okay. Now, before you decide which dice to re-roll, yeah. there's three different colours. Mm -hmm. The T one. Which ones have got the Ts on? That I one? I never remember. I, I see a 3T here. Yellow. Oh, there's a three team there. I see the one there. I think uh, there's the yellow, one there. The yellow as one's well. got more T's. Okay. Yeah, so I would re roll so that one and those that two. One. Same again. Yeah, go oh, re roll okay. again. Keep going. Right, now that is, is convert. Treat the lock type of one action die as the lock type of your choice. So you could basically change the letter on one of the other dice to become the letter of your choice, which is still... It's still unhelpful. No, you can combine... No, it is, but if that was a 1T, you could have changed this to a 2T, combined them together, and that would have uh, done it. But then those two dice would have gone. Okay? Right. Which means you only have one dice left. To get the, the whole lock. big six, which yeah. is no good. Which is really. not going to happen. Okay, now... Locks must be sold from left to right. Locks you open will stay open even for future attempts. If you fail to open the starting lock of an attempt, so I'm going to say that this is the starting lock because this is the well, first one that we're we've attempting. Done. Yeah, but you probably wouldn't have used the mech pick then. Why? Okay, because you get a free, on the starting lock, oh, right. you get a free a, a second attempt. Otherwise, that, that is a fail in its own. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So basically, you get a second attempt, and if that doesn't work, you can use the mech pick. Let me use the mech pick. Okay. Or if this does work, you can use the mech pick on the next one. Yeah. So yeah, so we've not used the mech pick no. yet. We use the so mech yeah, pick it's after. only on the starting lock you are able to make a second attempt immediately, once per day. Once per day. Okay. Oh, 3T. It's a 3T. Okay, so that's that. Oh, you need a 3L. 3L, you said yeah, 3T. it was 3T because we were on the trip. Oh, now we damn. need a 3L. Oh, you see, I was uh, aiming for 3T, so... <laughs> but you've got a re-roll. I do. So L um, is the... I see the some Brandos. L's here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the, there's several L's here. You can just about see the colours on here, but it's not clear. It's really not clear on the card. But there, there, is, there is a good rules question. If you use the mech pick on the first one, do you get the free re-roll on the second one? <laughs> what does that one mean? That means that you can give an action die plus one and not exhaust it. But you need an L. Yeah. So I'm afraid... That isn't a success. No. No. So I think you so can now use, that use the mech pick. To get on the first here. one. I think <laughs> that's how that works. And now because you've succeeded on that one, you can now move on to the next one. It's not before you roll, is it? It's Anything. without using action dice. So you haven't used any action dice. You've used no. the make pick to make pick the first one. So now you can move on to the second lock. 
okay. So now you need a three T. Go back. Oh, to hang on. Do, do you re, do you roll? Here's a here's a question. Oh. Do I have to re-roll? Okay, so Mark is saying that we could have used the mech pick, and then roll for that. Okay, well we've we've done it this way, but this this is another question now. Emily has failed the roll, so we're going to use the mech pick to do that one. Can we now keep those dice for the next one, or do we have to re-roll them? Uh, let's see if it says anything in here. To unlock them, you must roll lock picking dice. Try and bypass the number. Yeah. Rolled action dice of the same lock type may be added together to solve a lock. Used action dice are exhausted for the remainder of attempts. Any action dice not used may be carried forward to the next within the same attempt. Your this attempt is a different attempt? I'm no. not sure. No, oh, th this confusing. is one, this oh, is so all this is one, one attempt. This is one long attempt. Your attempt is over when you fail to open a lock, you have no more action dice to apply, or you solve all of your locks. Mm. You may not unlock multiple locks in a single roll. But you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't think we can. I think we need to roll again. Yeah. You can't unlock multiple locks in a single roll. So you rolled, failed, used the make pick, yeah. opened it. You have to now roll Now I have again. to try again. So now you need a 3T. Now I'm looking for a 3T. Yeah. You got a 3T. I got a okay. 3T. So that is exhausted. But we've now <laughs> opened the second one. And now you need to get a 6F. On those. Okay. Now you got to re-roll. Yeah, this is going to be almost impossible. Six is six is really really hard. There's a three on there. There's a three on there. There's a three on one three on there. Yeah. So, no, that's not going to do it. No. No. So, no, no. your attempt is over. Yeah. But because of the card, we each get an attempt. <laughs> yes. So, I have a 6F to do. And because this is the first one I'm doing, mm -hmm. I get a free reroll. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're saying. If you fail to open the starting lock of an attempt, it's in bold. It's, it's that definition of starting lock. I would have thought the starting lock would be that one, but I can see how the starting lock could be that one. So are we saying, for me, that the six force is the starting lock? Is that what we're saying? Okay, so that isn't a 6F. No, there's a 2F though. It's a 2, and I can treat it as a 3. And I've got reflex powder, two uses, re-roll any one die on your turn. Including training, lock picking, initiative and anything else. It's never going to get to six though, is it? It is if I do that. If I manage to oh. get a 3F on here. Oh yes. Okay. That's the six. Okay, so Scott has said yes. It's, and, and John has said, and Mark has said, that is the starting lock for me. Come on then. 3F. I don't think so use the reflex powder? You think it's worth saving for something else? Uh, it's just, it's a 1 in 6 chance. But I'll go for it. I'm going to use the reflex powder. So you turn it sideways to re-roll this die. Oh, oh, it's so close. So close. And then I will use the second... No. Aww. So, failed, but because that's my starting lock, I get another go. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm going to have a complete new go. Now, I see what you mean. It might have been better to, to save it. For, save it, um, yeah. Never yeah. Mind. Oh, so close. <laughs> so close. I've got 5F. Okay. okay, so I'm going so to re-roll re that one. There is Fs on it. There is one F on There's a two F oh, on it, but that's it. F. But I think that's probably my best it's chance. It's still the best chance, isn't it? Oh, in fact, it is. Because if that, yeah, oh. Mm. That's it. 
So I make that into a 3F and I've got 8F. Yay. Awesome. I think we did it. Right. At least you've seen that part of the game because that is a part of the game that you, you I don't know, what, what is the chance of you doing a lot of picking attempts? For me, it's been about one in three games, I think. Um, but yeah, something like that. So yeah, we did it. So each gear lock, yeah, yeah, locks open by one gear lock. Party must, right, okay, so we've completed the encounter, we get a progress point, which is good. Um, we also get a loot each, and we get the trove loot. So there you go, have a normal loot. We've got way more loot than I normally get in this game. That's a crazy really? amount of loot, yeah. Got a fortunate discovery. Okay, so you can trade that in at any time to get either one of those. Oh, um, yeah. Do you want to reveal the trove loot, and let's see what we've got. Dun, 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 dun. Exploding shrooms. So it's permanent. Permanently reduces the cost of your backup plan skills by one. So all of those ah. cost one fewer. Who, whoever takes it, I'm happy for you to have it. But we, we, we can't both keep all of the... But you could use the Fortunate Discovery Yes, now. I could use that now yeah. and then there'd be space. Yeah. Because it's not like a big one that takes more space Correct. than just... not one. heavy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do yeah. that? Okay. So you discard the Fortunate Discovery to take any one of your consumable dice. Oh yes, the... Um, and put it in its spot. So which one do you want? Do you want the Orkish so, Ale or the Gobby Jerky? I was going to go for the Jerky. Okay, so skill dice eight. And yeah. how does that one work? So when you use it, you roll it, mm -hmm. and you heal for a certain amount. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Okay. And now you can have that. So all of those are treated as if they cost one fewer. Items get used during the recovery, not reward. I'm not sure, Sean. I think you can oh. use your items whenever you want, can't you? Uh, you have to take the trove loot and discard before using any loot, says Brian. Oh, okay, so that's what you're that's what you're saying. And Scott is asking, does it mean that the innate plus one costs five? So it says it reduces the cost of your backup plan skills. Specifically backup your backup plan, plan skills. Extension. What's this? I'm not sure what the extension is. But I think the six bones upgrade to an eight plus one is a skill. Okay, so Mark has confirmed we can use the item at any time, but we cannot trade during rewards. Okay, so if you weren't using the item, what you, what you couldn't do is you couldn't give the item to me. In fact, yeah. I'd just take the exploding shrooms. Mm. Yeah, okay. I think we're all good. <clears throat> awesome stuff. So that is the end of day four. We now get to do the three options, recovery, uh, loot trading, and individual options. So. If we're both on full health, we are, aren't we? Yeah. I am going to <coughs> scout. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a six. six. So I could look at this, but I don't know whether we're ever going to draw that because we're a two-player game. Yes. So you might as well pick. So I might as well look lesser. at this one. We didn't do anything with that one. No, because we didn't have a battle. But if you oh. scout now, you'll look at the next one. So we found a bog lurk that has poison two. Now poison two is, is nasty, but there are nastier things in there. Yeah, poison two basically means when it goes on its initiative, uh, it doesn't attack. We mm. basically both get a poison two effect, which means on our turns, we take two damage. And it attacks all of us. Wait, it attacks both of us. So it's nasty, mm. but I'm worried about Things like Hardy and other things in there. Yeah. So, Plus it only would therefore hurt us by one because we both heal. We both one. heal for one. Yeah. So it's kind of not Yeah. too bad. So, do you want to scout? Yes. Got a one, so it will so, be... Yeah. Have a look at the next one. Oh, it's another poison. Okay. In which case, poison that's, that's fine. One. 
because you can only have one poison effect on you at any time. Uh, so the fact that we've got two poisony things isn't too bad. Isn't isn't going to affect us uh. that much. Okay, day five. Next day. <laughs> so remember, we need six progress points. If we have six progress points, we can choose to encounter the tyrant. Okay, so the next card is not blue. Why can't we all just get along? Does that mean we can't be friends? I joke as an arrow narrowly misses my left ear. The scrawny intruder just laughs as though he has no reason to be afraid of us. Judging by the wall of enemies that are rapidly amassing behind him, he may be right. It's going to take a lot of brute force to get through this blockade. So, we have two options, both of which are combat. Frontline charge. The battle queue is uh, 10 baddie points. Because we're two characters, day five. Party must eliminate all melee baddies before targeting ranged baddies. Okay. Or, let's keep our distance and wait for them to break. The battle queue is again 10. On rounds 1 to 2, melee gear locks can only roll defense dice. We can't use attack or skill dice. Uh, and that's it. So we can either charge them, where we have to eliminate the melee baddies before the ranged baddies. Mm -hmm. Or, keep our distance... Which but we can't on the, attack. On the first two rounds, we can't attack. I think the top one. Charge. Yeah, I think we're going to charge. So we have charge. Ba the battle queue is 10, which means it's that one and that one. Okay, right. Let's see what we've got then. So let's put side camera on. Uh, so where's number one gone? Number one has got six health. Two, three, four, five, six. It is the Bonglurk, range one, uh, uh, sorry, lane one, and it's ranged. And then we have a Griffin Howler, which is melee. So we have to attack the Griffin Howler before we have to kill it before we can target the other thing. So dive, flight, and signal one. So it's going to summon a one point buddy at the end of the first round of combat, I believe. Right. At the start of this unit's turn, add a single lesser baddie to the bottom of the battle queue, which will then appear at the end of the round. And yeah, okay, dive... so we want to kill that one first. We have to kill that one first We have to kill anyway. that one first anyway. And okay. do we put the dice? Yes. So things. number one has got initiative four, number uh, okay. two has got initiative five. Yeah. Okay. We roll our dice. Our dice. Okay, it's a three. Five. So you go first. Nice. And you get to reuse oh your. You get three defense dice. We got pick where to go. You got to pick Can where we? to go, and you use your innate ability. Get three defense dice. Oh yeah. What about that? So if you if you want to go right in front of it and hit it as quick as you can, because it's gonna it's gonna take off soon. Yeah. And that's a problem. I oh, just picked on. the wrong picked thing. picked the wrong stack up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, right. So, so. defence dice. Yeah, you first. get to use your innate ability to roll Where? your... Oh, they're all over there. Your three defence dice. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so you can mm -hmm. have two defence, but you can't have the bones. Fabulous. So we have to eliminate all melee mm -hmm. bodies before targeting ranged ones. Okay, so... So, Off you go, you're first. Right. So I might as well attack. I think so. Well, you've got four decks. Yeah. I can attack for two. Yeah. And then... Um, do that one, maybe? Mm-hmm. And one defence. And one defence. Okay. You also heal one at the start of your turn, but I think we're both I on full. I think we're on full at the yeah, moment, we're both aren't on we? Full. So we're all right for healing. Okay, we've done two we've damage. We've done two damage. Which is fine. I've got two bones. Got two bones. You can keep the shield or put it back in your shield tree thing. Sort of hoping for two. Yeah. Now, don't forget you've got your throwing axe. I so do. that's not going to kill it. And you could do as but a backup plan. Yeah. Oh, you're so close to killing it. You, you could kill it with the throwing axe and a shield bash. 
Well, what's do over? I'm just reading that. May immediately re-roll any number of rolled dice once. Okay. But I suppose you'd be replacing yeah. what you already had, so yeah. it's not really much. Okay. Unless it's re-rolling that one would be worth. Uh, well, you use the backup plan after you've done. Let's just check timing of using the backup plan. Key lock backup plan thirteen. Only one backup. Uh, only one backup plan skill can be used per turn. The cost of using it varies from one to six. Remove the skull, the bones that are used. Um, any bones rolled on your battle may be placed in your backup plan. Up to five can be stored. Line them up from left to right. Uh, yeah, and where, where's, where's the timing rules? Because somebody said mm. you use it after your turn, but whereabouts is that? Mm. Backup plan, gear lock, 13. Backup plan extension, 21 to 28. What's that? Oh no, that's something else. You cannot you re-roll dice used in backup plan. Right. But then that wasn't used in the it backup wasn't. plan. No. But you wouldn't want to re-roll that one because that's the best the best you could get. But yeah, you could you could do a shield bash. Right, so what you're saying is the re-roll would negate that it's not as well as that. Yeah, I don't yeah, That's I'm not sure you can re-roll now. Turn order is on the guard. Right. I knew it was somewhere. Gone. Turn order. Here we go. So the sequence is start of turn, move gear lock, determine target, select and roll dice, resolve the roll, baddies react, end of turn. So the backup plan is used in the resolving the roll. So I think technically you probably could you could put the dice in there before before using that two damage. You could put the dice in there, then re-roll that if you wanted to. Ah, so you don't use that and then no. do your redo and then you get to no. re-roll it. You don't back. get to re-roll okay. it and use it again. Okay. So you could shield bash. So I could do the shield bash instead, yes. Permanently reduce the cost <laughs> of your backup plan skills. So literally using the shield bash will cost you one bones. Yes. And not two. Wow, I can see why the Exploding Shrooms is really, really good. Yeah. I do have to get rid of that one. Yeah. I can just get rid of one of those then. And... So you shield bash it for two. Yeah. And then you could throw an axe at it. Yeah. So there, shield bash. Shield bash. And then... Um, and then throwing throw axe. Throw axes, roll one attack die. Here we go. The lucky one that's got yeah. two. Nice. Nice. Dead. That was brilliant. Yeah. Just went in, hit it, shield bashed it, <laughs> and threw an axe at and it. And threw an axe. And it is... What are you going to do this time? To any unit on the battle map does not cost X. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that was lucky. So there you go. We got it. Sorted. Very good. Uh, um, so now it's this one. We've been and we both take poison too. Poison. Okay? So what happens is we take uh, this ah. on there. And this on there. Okay. So poison is at the start of your turn. Yeah. You take that amount of true damage and then you reduce mm. it by one. But it's going to apply it again every round. So okay. it's going to give two down to one, then back up to two, two, then down to one, back up to two. Okay. So it's me next. So I take two damage. Poison reduces to one. But then you take one. And then I... Use Back. my innate ability to heal one, mm -hmm. and then it's my go. Okay. So I've got these toxins. So I've got three decks. I can't really get. Why did I start here? <laughs> um, Axe has two uses. Has it? I thought it said to get rid. Oh, it's two uses. It says oh, two nice. uses. Thank you. So you actually rotate it like okay. that, so it's got one use left. Ah, Thank you. You got two throwing you. axes. He should, he should say throwing axes. Yes. <laughs> um, More like a boomerang, it came back and I yeah. get to throw it again. I think I might just... I don't really need these at the moment because we're quite high on health. Do we have to get closer to it to be able to attack it? Because we're melee, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, if we were a ranged character, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't need to, but we are melee. So I okay. think, let's just check my skills. Um, I've got nutrients. What happens? What, what do I put that one? That is... Okay, so if I roll that, I can lock it in. No, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use I'm going to use my three decks to roll two defense and the toxins. Mhm. Mm well, that's a double bones. That counts as two. Nice. So it's either that or put poison on it. Oh, it's a tricky one. What does your two bones do? Heals. Heals a gear lock for one hit point, which is near. Yeah. Because I think. But we'll then you would that. have three. Does your three thing? Yeah, needle do? jab. I can. I can hit my target for two damage. Ah. I stick my target for two damage. Question is if I'm if I'm going to get to six. <laughs> I might do. I, I might do this. I might just try and drag mm. this battle out. So that counts as two bones. That counts as one. And I've got a shield. Right, that's me done. So that's the end of the round. Mm -hmm. So we go to round two. It's you first. You take two damage. But then you heal one because of your your new fancy yeah, regeneration. Yeah, yeah. And then the poison goes down to one. Okay. Right, off you go. Well, I've got to get close to it, haven't I? Yeah. And, uh... Yeah. So two decks One, to get you two. there, and then you've got two decks left. Which I could do two attack dice. You could do two attack dice, or, you could do defense um, die, you could do all sorts of combinations. Mm. At this point, defense dice are no good, apart from rolling bones, because it's, it's not actually attacking. It's no. doing poison, which is yeah. true damage. So I might as well do two attack. Except you've got your shield bash. So for you... Because there's more bones on them, is there? There's more bones on the defence dice. Ah, okay. And because you've got shield bash, your defence dice, if you roll shields, can become damage. <laughs> yeah, so two defence ones so then, two, isn't two it? Two defence yeah. dice. Yeah, much better. There you go. Oh. So if you wanted to, you could shield bash it for four. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Right, so you remove the bones, shield bash it for four. Nice. Yeah, that shield bash at a cost of one bones is really good. Mm. Uh, so now it's its go. It oh, yeah. puts poison two on both mm. of us. Mm -hmm. Then on my go, I take two damage and heal one. one back, yep. Uh, and then I'm going to roll two defense dice and nutrients. There we go. Shannon said on BGG, unless otherwise stated, loot can be used outside of battle at any time. Yeah, outside of battle at any time. Oh, right, Sean. Referring to when we did it in the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, the... which is fine. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Okay. Right. Okay, so I've rolled two more bones. Nice. I'm close. And I've got this. Which is two healing. I don't think we need it, do we? Not really. No, so I'm just going to put that back. Yeah, because it's got two bones I, I on just, it. I just need one more bones. <laughs> and then I've got my innate plus one. So that's the end of the round. So we go to round three. You first. You take two damage. Then you heal one. Yep. Poison goes down to one. Now, does the battle end immediately when we kill all baddies? <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it does. Um, encounters. Yeah, that is, that is the question for the chat. Does the encounter end as soon as you kill all baddies? I think it does. I don't think it's the end of the round. Um, successfully completing an encounter. The battle encounter choice is successful if at least one gearlock remains on the battle map after all baddies are defeated. Yeah, I don't think you play until the end of the round. Okay, okay so I want to not kill it then this time. Is that? 
Would I, that be best? Ideally, yeah. yeah that would okay. be that would be best if you can just be roll best. lots of. Um... Okay, so I could roll these two. You don't want to roll that one because that's a consumable. So you'd have to use it straight away. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. I, I believe consumables you cannot you can't roll save them and it. choose not to use them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Scott's confirmed battle ends immediately. So, yeah. but yeah, Emily could just roll loads of defense dice. And I might roll this one. Yeah. As well. So you could roll three defense right. and three. that. And do. Another defense. Oh, another defense. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you can keep them or not keep them or. What do you want to do with the bones? Bones, like Keep good, it. Yeah. So you're voluntarily choosing not to use your backup plan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it puts poison two on both of us. And then on my go, I take two damage, heal one. And then I'm going to roll that and two defense. Almost run out of defense, nice. Okay. I think they're hiding. I just need one bones. One bones. You don't have to use dice, even... You don't have to use dice. Even consumables? I thought consumables, if you chose to roll them, then that uh, was it. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I just wondered if I could lock it and then use it uh, later. No. Is it, if you have a look on your thing, what does it say for... What are the letters after it? Oh, um... I. I. It's used immediately. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. So it can't be locked or anything like that. Yep. I didn't roll any bones. Oh. Ah, it's terrible. Oh, that's frustrating. Yeah. I mean, there's there's only two on there, but I rolled so many last time. You don't have something that allows you to re-roll. I, I don't. No. That is a shame. That is a shame. Uh, what's Brett saying? You need to unslot your shield. Unslot my Which shield. shield. Oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes, thank you. In order for me to roll two defense die, I had to remove that because the fact that I had one there was using your. Oh, yes. So, I, yeah, I would have had yeah. to have unslotted that. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're done. Next round, round four. Batting. You take two, but then heal one. What do you want to do? Can I kill it now? Y you can kill it if you want to. Or we could delay things a bit more. Because me getting my innate plus one will help you. Okay then. Because it means I can heal any gear lock for one hit point at the start of my turn. Okay. We will delay it by one. So if we, if we can delay it a little bit more, then that would be great. I'm going to put that die back. <laughs> yes, wait another round. Wait another round. Okay, then. So, I will try to get some more. Oh, no, because I've got three there. I can't use you, any you more can, You defense. can take them off. I could take them you off. Can you can unslot them all. I'll unslot them all. And re-roll them all. That'll be three. As defense. And shall I do one attack one? And if yeah, it's just a one, it. yeah. I could... Get yeah, it for get one, and then we'll be close. Yep. Yeah. Oh, bones. Nice. There you go. A couple of bones. So you could activate your benevolence, whatever that does. Oh, yeah. Whatever what does that, that does. do? So now it puts poison two on both of us. Heal picket for two HP. Also add a defense two die to his active slot. Okay. So it's me again. <laughs> Got it. There you go. Six bones. Yay. So I am now in eight plus one, which gives me an immediate one extra health. And I can now heal anybody at the start of mm -hmm. each turn. Yeah, I didn't notice what that dice was. What was that dice that I just rolled? Um, anyway, next round, round five. You first. Do you want to kill it? Yeah. Okay. In in well, you could try and go for your in eight plus one. 
You absolutely could. Yeah. I so guess one so. attack dice and three. Yeah. Three defense. One, Try and get yours. Three. That'd be great if you did. One. No. 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 You're gonna kill it. Let's kill it, shall okay. we? It is dead. Right, battle is over. So we come back a little bit wounded, but we are back. Um. What was that? Was that this one? Um, it was, that was the this one, isn't it? top one, isn't yeah. it? So we get two training points, we get a progress point, and we get loot. Now, use the axe. I have a fortunate discovery, so if Sweet. I want to take this... Yeah, I am going to get rid of my infused incense, and I am going to take fortunate discovery. First. Okay. I think I'm just going to get rid of this one. It's just ignore uh -huh. one bones when making a training attempt. Yeah, it's not great, is it's it? It's not that good, it's is it? It's not good at all. Nah. Right, okay. So we've got two training points. <laughs> two training points. Two training points is awesome. We, we, we're well ahead of the curve in terms of training points. Oh, are we? Yeah. Normally you get one or two a day. And I think, oh, yeah, one a day if you're lucky. And we've got loads. <laughs> so... But okay, we so gonna, we are going to be fighting something what big. What are these the blue ones and switch? Immediate or A? What does A mean again? Active. You put active. it in your active slots. Okay. You only have three active slots. Yes. Anytime during your turn, swap positions with an adjacent unit. Oh, I need to look at my thing. Uh, right, what am I going to have? What am I going to have? Got lots of stuff here now, but the fights are getting tougher. What? How do you get these ones? You can buy that one oh. because it's got a star on it, but you can't buy oh, yes, intercept the... unless you've taken red shirt. Now I don't okay. think red shirt is useful. Okay. Um, because I Protector. read the, yeah read the thing on the back. If you've got a um, a really weak character in the party, that that skill can help them. Remember, you can now go to Shield Form and Sword Advance. You can now take those two. Oh, okay. Because you've you've bought this skill, so you can uh, therefore have those two. I thought that because it wasn't there anymore. No, I think it... I think you're allowed to. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. Um. So. Shield Form or average training points is slightly over one per day. Okay, yeah, but we've we've been getting two quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it's a shame we've not been getting more on the. Progress is normally progress. one per day. Yeah, there's very few cards that get you two. Okay. It's one per day. So I think... I mean, I've only got three decks. So I think I need another point of decks. Keep George happy. What does the feat mean? Constant and... moon. Stim kit? I'm going to get a sword. Sword is number five. Oh, the stim kits went wrong last time I used them. I remember them. Oh, we got we got, got to get two, haven't we? I'm going to take skill dice got... number. Oh, do we do that? Ben's here. Hi, Ben. Thank you for joining in. Mark is asking if red shirt Feed. is the taunt. If so, Feed you can use time. it to have a ranged body that hits multiple targets to only hit picket. Oh, right. That's useful to know. Yeah. Do we go with fast hands? Fast hands will then lead us to bone saw. No, I think I'm going to increase my attack. Oh, which means I need to roll. So I'm going to I'm going to try and increase my attack. So this is actually going to be my first training point is to increase my attack. I did it. Mm. Right. Okay. It does say on my guide to try and get to attack. Well done. There you go. Two training points spent. Um, I will. Don't forget, you could also increase your health. Yeah, that's what I was. Okay, so gonna health's do. going up to nine. 
which means you get an additional one now, but you don't you don't heal to full. Okay, and your second training point. Oh, was that the that was the sword? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got the sword. So we are all done. Next day. Well, no, we're going to the recovery bit. Oh yeah. So we 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 get our individual options. We can scout the area, search for better loot. Or go up to full health. Or go up to full health. See, I'm tempted not to go up to full health because I've got the fresh bog meat, which I can just eat in the battle, and that will give me five hit points. But it means I get poisoned. But that's fine. Um, so I'm considering... I'm going to play it safe. I'm just going to go You're going to go back to full? Yeah. yeah. I'm considering scouting. Considering how go. things have been going, I think we'll need all the health we can Rule get. two, which means oh. I get to have a look at this one. It shouldn't be there, because it's the wrong colour. <laughs> That's for an expansion. It's another bog frog <laughs> with poison two, which is oh, fine. I don't mind those. No, I don't mind those. So, there you go. Right, we are done. Now we go on to day six. So let's have a look at the card. It's the blue one. Okay, so this is the special encounter card specifically for Mulmesh. I've got to reset my backup plan. Oh, you do? Yeah, those should go. Ah, yeah. Uh, which means your dice goes back. Okay. Thank you, Trap. Thank you. Right, the scent of a gear lock. You don't have to be a ranger <laughs> to sense when you're being followed. When your stomach instinctively clenches and the hair on your ears is at attention, there are probably eyes on you. What can be done? Well, nothing in this case. Too much time would be wasted trying to reveal this pursuer. And yet, after a few hours, paranoia starts to set in. It feels like there are more eyes watching with each passing moment. Shadowy figures slip in and out of the trees, always hidden, but there in the corner of your eye. What are they waiting for? Okay, so we don't have a choice. Um, it is an, another stomach knot. This is becoming all too familiar a feeling. Search your active stacks for the first beast type baddie and Beast. place it on the Tyrant card that will be added to the Tyrant battle. So this is the Tyrant card over here. This is going to be added into the final battle. Okay. If it is a party size of one or two, we search for a one-point buddy. So we're going to go through this for the first one that's a beast. How do we know it's, it's a beast? It's the icon in the bottom right. Oh, okay. It needs to be purple. No. What if there isn't one? There is. Well, oh, okay. I think it says if there is. If the correct bodies are that's not found. So we've been through that. Uh, and that goes on here. Search your active stacks for the first active beast and place it on the tyrant card that will be added to the tyrant battle. If correct baddies are not found, search the baddies you have already defeated. Draw another encounter for today and reshuffle this card into your encounter deck. Okay, so it basically has just made it a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got to do. So what, we get a one. new encounter and then we shuffle it back in. So that's the new encounter, and then oh, so under it the could table, keep. yeah, because we're mm. being followed. Okay, so that's been shuffled in. Cards going on top. There you go. Mm. Right, unsteady ground. Nothing tops a tough day of hack and slash like a smoky campfire and a warm meal, or one of Patches' stims, or a bottle of Tantrum's homemade grog. It's just nice to be to be together. Have all the limbs we've started with, and still be pressing forward. It's a little strange, though, as it seems the longer we lie by the fire, the taller everything is becoming. Wait a minute, where's our gear going? The earth is swallowing our pots and pans. Everything's disappearing before our eyes. Quicksand! So we've got two choices. Both of them are non-combat. The top one gets us a training point. The bottom one gets us uh, loot, but they both give us a progress. So the first option is... Tie these ropes to arrows, find a tree and let them fly. Um, we place a defense die on each of the baddie range positions, which is a tree. <laughs> we place an attack die mm -hmm. on each of the gear lock range positions, mm -hmm. which is the arrows. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've done this one before. Then we have to choose a gear lock to literally flick the attack die to try and hit the defense die in its lane without knocking it off the map. 
at least three targets must be successfully hit by arrows. Okay, or Molnor Raid, the most costly kind. Um, each gearlock must compete in a dangerous darts challenge, and at least one gearlock must win for the party to gain progress. Each winner also gains one loot. But if we do that, we shuffle the special encounter Molnor Traders into our encounter deck if he's not already in. Okay, so. Uh, Scott is saying, I believe you shuffled the non-scouted baddies back in. Yeah, I thought so. So we've looked at those three. So these ones, that one that gets one. shuffled back in, does it? Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so which, which do we want to do? The Dangerous Darts Challenge we came across before. We didn't do it, but Mark has done the stats and apparently is, there's a 47% chance that... <laughs> <laughs> will succeed. <laughs> Whereas this one is literally, we've got to hit three targets, three out of the four targets. How good is your dexterity? When you say we, yeah, is it one both of us? Of us? No, one it's of us. one of us. So you could do it because do you're it. so good at flick of faith. Oh, because I'm good at flick of faith. Yeah. Well, that was down to the alcohol, I think. Um, <laughs> Click or flick or slide each attack die. To, I'm, I'm not. The last time I tried this, I didn't succeed at all. Oh. But mm. what does the chat think? What does the chat think? I picked the second option last time, did I? I'm pretty sure I have done some flicking of dice. Maybe we did a practice. <laughs> Let's do another practice. A practice. Practice run. Okay. I'll do another practice. So I'm going to flick each of these. It's got to hit the You've dice. You've got to hit, flick it with... No, no, no. Just just me. Okay. Flick each attack dice to hit each defence die in its lane without knocking it off the map. And I've got to hit at least three targets. So this is a practice. Okay. Okay. One. Two. Three. So do you think? I think you can do it. You think I can do it? Okay. We're going to do option A. We're not going to do the dangerous darts challenge. This is going to go wrong now, you know. Yes, now, but you know you're, you're so good at flick of fate. Now the pressure's I on. I, I will just have to say to, to myself mentally, this is a practice. Yeah? I'm gonna it's say just to a, it's just another I'm, I'm, flick of fate. I'm gonna say to moment. myself, this it's is nothing. this is just a practice. No pressure. The fate of the world is not just a tree. Depend. Yeah, have I done my nails? Yeah, <laughs> right, okay. It's just a tree. Here we go. Oh, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I can't, can't do it. Oh. A bit harder. No, so we failed. Oh. Oh. There we go. So close. <laughs> Shouldn't have practiced. <laughs> so close. Yeah, I just got nervous. Okay, so we didn't do it. So we don't get the training point. We don't get the progress point. That's it. We don't get anything. We don't get anything. No, we did not succeed. We get nothing. Oh. So, end of the day. We get to do the options. Uh, uh, I'm going to scout. Yeah, might as well. I'm going to think. It's a six. But I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. It's a manticore. Now, the manticore is known as one of the dangerous monsters, most dangerous monsters in the game, mm. I think. Oh. Because um, it's got poison two, it attacks both things, and it's got rage two. Oh. Which means if this unit is at, not at full hit points, it gets an additional attack dice. But it doesn't actually have any attack dice. Isn't, isn't the Manticore supposed to be super, super dangerous? Because I think that Poison 2, for us, is okay. But does it attack and poison at the same time? Yeah. Does, it does both. Yeah, but its base attack is zero. But if it is damaged, it gets two attack dice. So I, I think the Manticore is okay. Scott is saying bury it, but why bury it? Why is it? Why is it bad? The reason the reason I'm saying is I'm going to go into the battle and I'm going to eat my fresh bog meat right at the start, which means I'm going to add a poison two effect. So that's going to have no effect on me whatsoever. Yeah, the Manticore is not the worst. It is ranged, yeah. It's ranged. It is ranged, so we, we'd have to go for it, and we'd have to kill it early. How much health does it start Six. with? Six. That's not that many. Yeah. 
But the point is, we've just faced a monster with poison too, and it was fine. And we dragged it out. Yeah, I th I think we're okay. I yeah. think keep that one. Yeah. Right. Do you want to do your scare yeah. tink? Oh. So you can look at another five point bag. Yes, let's do that. Okay. Because we've. It's a dragon. Okay. That's big and that's tough. So that's ranged. It's got seven health. It's got engulf. So when Ooh. it attacks us, it hits us and everything next to us. Mm, that one's uh, worse, isn't it? It only hits one of us though, and it's got weakened too. So when it hit, when it targets you, it gives you your dex is reduced by two. For that next round. That's rubbish. That is rubbish. Should we get rid of that? One? I think I think put that one to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, okay. next day, day seven. Day seven. And the card is, is not the blue one. Caverns or cake? Cake, obviously. Gather round, everyone. After a few hours of scouting, it seems we have a couple choice options to consider and the cover of dusk in which to carry them out. We could risk the unknown in cramped quarters and explore the northern cave, which seems laden with impressive loot, or take a breather and possibly a nice meal off the group of napping raiders Camped on the Eastern Ridge. Anyone with an undisclosed fear of bats? No. Two choices, both of them combat. Mm. We can have a battle where the battle queue is mm. 14 baddie points plus six. So, so it's actually 20. 20. So it, it is that. Oh. We fight one of those, but if we succeed, we get two trove loot. Is purple trove loot? I think purple might be trove loot. Yeah, it's two trove loot. Okay, or never turn down cake. We have a battle of 14 buddy points and we have surprise. But either way, we get two training points if we succeed. So we either fight that 20 point buddy mm. or, or 14, 14 so point buddies be... and we have surprise. I, th I think the second one. Yeah, right. we let's, always go let's for Let's not go anyway. for the trove loot. Yeah. So we're going to do the top one. Uh, sorry, we're doing bottom the bottom one. one. So it's Kate. 14 points, which is two fives and four ones. Okay, and we have surprise. So we start at the top of the initiative meter. So let's put the battle cam on. Mm -hmm. Do we okay. have to roll? It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter it doesn't because we doesn't make any difference. Okay. No, because we got surprise. So the manticore is lane one. Where's lane one? Manticore, lane one, ranged, six health. That's the one we want to get rid of first. Yeah. Lane two is a hardy compound cobalt elite. Mm. Right, that's <laughs> that's even worse. Right. Because hardy means it only takes one damage. Oh yeah, that's really turn. bad. So I'm gonna to have to put my poison on it, because poison it takes the damage on its turn, and then we hit it on our turn. But yeah, hardy is nasty, mm -hmm. compound is nasty. It's lane two, melee. How many are we putting on? Four. And with two more in the queue. Because it's 14 body points. So it's two fives and four ones. Right. The lane three is the clay golem, which has break. Gulp. Lane three, melee. Lane four is the bog pole that we can pretty much ignore because there's another quirk with the rules of this game that a poison effect replaces another poison effect so if something puts poison two on you and then something mm -hmm. puts poison one the poison one apparently officially replaces the poison two which makes no thematic sense but mm. that's the rules as they are mm. why is the battle queue face up because we scouted so we, we scouted this one so we knew that one was there we don't know what this one is but we know that one's there. Okay, so what have we got? So there's a lot. Here. Yes, the six right. enemies in total. So would it have been better to have just one big one? Possibly, but the twenty point buddy is a twenty point buddy. Right, okay. It's, okay. it's very, very tough. Very, very okay. Yeah. Where's the uh where's the number three? There. So um number oh. one, purple, is three initiative. Number two, sorry, no, number one is blue, three initiative. Number two has got three initiative. 
Number three is yellow, which has got two initiative. We'd have probably been going first anyway. And number four has got three initiative. Yeah, they've got really slow initiatives anyway. So. Uh, off we go. Yeah, 20s often bring in a five. Some, some of the 20s have got the ability to bring in other ones. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, right, off we go then. Where are we going where, where we gonna to start? Mm -hmm. We're both melee, so we have to start on the melee places. We need to get rid of that, because otherwise it's doing one attack this turn round, then two attack next round, then three, then four, then five. Uh, we don't want to hit the clay golem until near the end, because it's got break. So every time you hit that with an attack dice, you lose the attack dice. Oh. Uh, and we also want to get rid of that because Real it's poisoning us. Well. Every, but as I say, because of the poison one, ah. we could actually ignore that. It's not going to do anything to us at all. Well, it gives us two damage, doesn't it? Well, no, because it poisons us here, but then the bug pole comes along and poisons us for one. So the one replaces the two. So we only take one damage. This is actually <laughs> useless. <laughs> I think. Would it still not do the two attack that's not poison? No, because it's not oh, any okay. attack. The rage oh, only okay. applies if it's damaged. If See. it's angry, it gets two attack. So if it's miffed, okay. Do you want to roll your three defense? Okay. For your innate ability. Okay. Okay. So you got two shields. That's nice. Right then. Where are we starting? <laughs> I'm gonna start. Ah, now, we could be clever here, and we could start here and, and move, although I can't hit it from there. I'm no. just thinking, if, if we go here, mm. that can't get to us. It's only mm -hmm. got one attack dice anyway. It's not worth it, is it? Hmm. Okay. You've got your fancy sword. You do have a nice so sword. So if you can roll the infinity on that, you do plus one damage for the rest of the adventure. Yeah, that'd be nice. Nice. That? Okay. Uh, Brett is saying, shouldn't you roll two initiative to figure out who goes first? Yeah, you're absolutely right, actually. We, we should roll initiative yeah. to see which one of us goes first. Sorry, I rolled for you. But yeah, no, you're going right. first, so there you go. Okay. So we need to be nearer this one so that we I think we need to get rid of that as soon as possible. Attack him first. Yeah. yeah. So I think one of us goes here, one of us goes there. Probably doesn't matter which. We've both got four dexterity. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, you're up. I'm up. So, we definitely want to be rolling that one. Yeah. So you've got four decks. Uh, one. One. Um, let's chuck in. One attack, two attack. One, two. Mm. Or two, and then a defense. Because you want to do at least one damage, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Attempt one. Yeah. So you've dealt it one damage. Yeah. You've got an extra shield. And what do you want to do with that? And then um, we're going to put it back. Okay. I would like the sword. Yeah, because you <laughs> can't shield bash it because it's taken one damage this turn. Remember, that's that's a, a, a reusable bones. So if this oh, didn't yes. have Hardy, yes. you could have spotted it, used the shield bash, Use dealt it three bash. more damage, and, and got the dice back. Okay. But unfortunately, it's got Hardy. Yeah. So, right. So, you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, my go. I've got four decks. I'm going to spend one deck to move to there. I am then going to uh, attack it. And you mentioned use, poison? And but use do toxins. you still need that? Yeah. Yeah, because I think toxins... Yeah, I place the poison effect die on your target. So I have to target it, so it has to be melee. Right, it's the beginning of your turn. Don't you have to oh, heal, I, I heal yourself? Thank you. I heal. 
So I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six. Did you want to use something? Not yet. No. Because that would be a waste right oh, now. Oh, right, okay. So once I've taken some damage from the poison, mm -hmm. I'm then going to eat the bog meat. Uh, right, off we go. So my target is the Cobalt Elite. Well, I'm dealing it one damage. Mm -hmm. It's a double bones. Mm. No. No, it's lost it back. Okay, so first of all, we have the Manticore. Yeah, so the Manticore puts poison two on both of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that's the Manticore done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, Manticore goes first, puts poison two, it's ranged, it's attacking two people. Okay. So then we have purple, we have this one, this is also attacking two people. Now, is it, I always forget this, is it one die mm -hmm. applied to both of us? Roll attack dice for each target separately. Yeah, okay. So, uh, do you want to roll for the attack on you? So you take one, one. and I take one. I just use so you, yours comes off there, mine comes off there. Okay, that's the purple one done. Next is the green one. It puts poison one on both of us. And because of this quirk in the rules, which a lot of people have ruled, poison two goes down to poison one. Because it always applies the, the most recent poison effect. But I believe, and let me know in the chat which house rule you use, uh, but a lot of people say that the highest poison stays. But the official rules are that the new poison replaces the old one, even if it's lower, which seems very, very odd. <laughs> um, so that's that done. And then the this goes, and it moves two, and it attacks you for one. Let's roll the bones, which does nothing. Okay. <coughs> End of the round. There are still four enemies on the board. So nothing new arrives. We go to round two. And it's your go. So you take one damage, but then you heal one. Yes. And then the poison goes. Okay. Let's see if we can get the sword. I love having a, a useless manticore. <laughs> one, two... Defense. Uh, Mark is saying that his personal house rule is that when the poison changes, it takes damage. So from going to two to one, it deals the two damage like it normally would. That's an interesting one. Yeah. And another defense dice. Another maybe? defense dice. So there's your four. So there's the one so damage. You dealt the one damage, which is good. Let's put the side camera on. It's down to two health. So two. if you're slotting bones, two do you bones. want to slot that bones as well? I'm just going to read break again, because I think shield bash... Mm. Yeah, shield bash gets round break. So if you were to use the shield bash, the break is not affected, because it says any attack dice used to reduce this unit's hit points must be exhausted. So you could use one of the bones to do a shield bash and do two damage to the clay golem. That might be the way to get rid of the clay golem, is just keep shield bashing it. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know what happens when you get up to here. Um. Yes, Emily healed. Emily Emily took the damage from the poison yes. and, then, and then did her heal. Yeah. Yeah, so Brian, you're saying you played it wrong. You've played it as to what my house rule would be. Um, I, I think the higher poison should stay. It just seems really odd that a poison one replaces a poison two. The, um, I don't quite get what the shield shock does. Shield shock. Perform backup plan shield bash. So you do the shield Just bash do the as shield normal. bash and... Also, your... Oh... So your target, as long yeah. as it's not the tyrant, uh, is that's stunned. That's the tyrant. That's the tyrant. So 
as long as long as it's not the tyrant yeah any th any other target is stunned and places the stunned die on it uh, which means it loses its next turn oh yeah okay or just keep shield bashing mm. it for one yeah is another option yeah there's no point in using it because i can shield bash with just one yeah 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 do you want to shield bash then or yes okay yeah so we're we gonna might shield well. bash the clay golem for two yeah that does of course mean you don't mm. have any defense die mm. but i've got lots of healing yes and i'm at full strength at the moment yeah, so it's yeah. not too we're bad fine. right now fine. so that's your go done so my go i take one damage i heal one yeah that comes off so how many am i down to four i've lost four health i might just eke it out a little bit longer mm. um are you not sure mm. okay i'll eat my fresh bog meat i saw how quick the damage yeah, came true. the other time but well, that was because it was a dire wolf yes well there are yeah okay so i'm going to eat the fresh bog meat i heal for five but only four and yeah. i get a poison two effect which in this game is going to do absolutely nothing. I was getting too poisoned anyway. Right, so I have four dexterity. I am going to do two attack, toxins, and a defense. And I'm going to target this. Okay, well, that'll do it. It, it may be it may be overkill. Can it only get one damage anyway? Well, it's only round two. It's only going to, yeah, it can only take the one damage, but then I'd put the poison on it, which means on ah. its turn it would die. Yeah, do it. Do you think? Well, does that mean then that you can't use that mm. later? Ah, okay. No, it's okay. Yeah, that's mm. fine. So I'm going to exhaust that to put a poison two effect on it. It, it was my plan. Um, every time I change plans mid turn, something goes horribly wrong. So there it is. So there's a poison two effect on it, and I've dealt it one damage. So yeah, it's got one health left. Okay, done. So now it's the blue one. So the Manticore puts a poison two on both of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the purple one takes the damage from the poison and dies. That's gone. Gone. Then the green one puts a poison one on both of us. Then the yellow one hits you for one. One damage. One damage. End of the round. So we get a bog frog arriving. Comes in at the end of the initiative. Got four health and it's coming in on lane two and it is melee. Ah, so that's a melee. Where is that ranged? Okay. So yeah, we just got lots of poisoning things that don't attack us. So this is actually this is actually quite easy, I think. That's not Yeah, I know, I know. It's not crow now. I know. Right, you'll go. I go. So I heal for one. You do? And you take one poison. So oh yeah, so it doesn't out. move. Yeah. yeah. Poison comes off. Okay. Now we're just attacking. Uh, one defense. Yeah, you don't want to attack the clay golem because you'll lose your attack dice. But, just but go, go this for the one. Bog yeah. Yeah. Um, another attack dice, please. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah. Ooh. Nice. I'm keeping so it. So you lock that. There is a two, but I'm not going to be greedy. No. Okay, so what does that do? Is it literally just one know. extra damage for the entire... Constant damage. Add one to the total damage applied to your target. Right. Lasts for the entire adventure. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> so you've actually dealt two, two damage. damage. And I'll have a shield and... Another bone. Another bone. Should I use one now? I think save it. Save it. Because yeah. if you get three, you need to do it all in one go. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Happy I go. I take okay. damage on heal. And. <laughs> I will then... Do we need much healing? We don't do it at the moment. No. Nope. So I'll have two attack. And... I will retrieve this to roll two defense. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to attack the... Uh, the bog pole. Actually, no, I'm going to attack that one. Without looking, I'm going to attack that one. Mm-hmm. Because you can hit that one. Mm-hmm. So I've done three damage. Three. Oh, so Actually, no, I don't want to attack that one. No, no, no. That, that's silly attacking that one because that's the one that's putting the poison one on us. So that oh, is the one yeah. I want to attack. Good point. Yeah, that's the one that's keeping us alive <laughs> by replacing the poison two with the poison one. Right, okay. So that's me done. So now it's the blue one, which puts a poison two on both of us. Which then goes down to a poison one. And then the clay golem hits you. Take one damage, which you've got a shield. Oh yes, thank goodness. Uh, okay. End of the round, we get and a new, new one. one. It's <laughs> the bog frog. It's full of them. Okay, so four health. It's basically exactly the same as the one we've just killed. Okay. It's just come back up again. But that is the last enemy. Round three, you're up first. So I'll get poison for one, re thingy. Yep, and then the poison goes. Okay. And then um let's get let's do two defense and two attack dice. On the On this that one, one yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's, okay. Two so it's three damage plus one. Because of your super yeah. sword. Super sword. Um, and I could shield bash it for two. Shield bash it for two. Yeah, so the clay golem is down to one health. Okay. Yay. Wanna go? Yep. Um mm. We're just not taking any damage, are we? Our our innate regeneration abilities are pretty amazing mm. with this particular setup. Uh, so I'm going to recover that one, re-roll it, and then just two of these, and that's it. Got a spare decks that I'm not using. I could re-roll that because I might get loot. Mm. Yeah, I might as well re-roll it because if mm. I don't like it, like it's three points of healing, I'll just put it back. Uh, done three damage. Done dead. Not bone. There you go. These <laughs> bog poles keep popping up and then disappearing again. So, puts poison two on us, puts poison one on us, and then that hits you for one. Which rolls oh. the bones. Doesn't do anything at all. We've both got poison one on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, round four. Fatigue damage is going to start kicking in soon. Doesn't the shield bash have to be against your target? Oh, you might be right. We might have been cheating. Just check that. Shield bash. Good point, Brett. Does it say your target? To target. Okay, so. We can't be doing we'll, that. We'll, we'll undo that. Mm. Put that back. Mm. And you use the bones to do it? Yeah. We'll put that back. Uh, and give it one. Well, no, in fact, because you did the shield bash earlier, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have to put the we're going to have to put it back on five health. Thank you, Brett. We have fixed that. Um, you probably should have some more of these, but it will be difficult to undo it that much. It'll be fine. Okay, we fixed it. Ish. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. So I better move you take to damage. get close yeah. to that one. Yeah, I think the Manticore is now the next target. Yeah. So, so two one, decks together. Two. Yeah. And now we've got two dice left. What do you want to do? Two dice left. Um, just attack, probably, isn't it? This one. Yeah. Yeah. Or 
Oh, I suppose if I get some shields, it'll... Mm. Yeah. The other option is that you, you don't attack it. No. And you attack this one instead. But then that one... So, yeah. Because if you're not going to be able to kill this one... But I thought we were going to kill that one after we killed yeah, that one. Yeah, I'm just thinking, if you hit this one and damage it... Oh, yes. It's going something to attack else, you for two dice. There? Yes. But I could move in and I could also hit it. Yeah. So... Let's try that then. So we're going to try and kill it? Try and kill it. Because you can always shield bash it for two. I can shield bash it for and two. And you've got a throwing axe. That's true. I forgot about the axe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's three. Three damage because of your super My sword. My super sword. Okay. Let's put side camera on. So it's down to three. Yeah. Okay. So you could... We could throw the axe. I've got you, a roll and attack dice yeah. for that. And do the sword. And do the shield bash. Show. So that'll get rid of it. Well. Yeah. As long as. See what you get from the throwing axe. So the throwing axe is now gone. No, you roll the bones. Work. Bones. Down. So no damage. But you don't <coughs> get to lock the bones in. I don't believe. Or no. maybe you do. I don't know. Hmm. There's a question. George is saying any outstanding rules questions. We've just got one. If you use the throwing axe and you roll the bones, can you put the bones into your backup Probably plan? Probably not. I don't know. Well, whether you can or you can't, George will let us know. Uh, was the consumable query clarified? You don't have to use it when you roll it. You can put it back in the tray. Okay, thank you very much. And Mark is saying we may not. Okay, so the throwing axe missed. <sighs> It's good to know about consumables. I thought it was the other way around. Because of when I was playing um, Boomer and I was using grenades. But that was a grenade, that's different. Okay. So I if still you, might as well shield bash it? If you it? shield bash it for two, I can probably get in and, yeah. and yeah. finish it off. Yeah. So. Done. Right. Okay, so my go, I take a poison damage and heal. And then I use two of my four decks to move to here. Mm -hmm. And the other two, I have two attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. And score is dead. Okay, done. Uh, so the manticore was the blue one. Okay, so it's just the green one left. Mm -hmm. So it puts poison one on both of us, which we pretty much ignore. And then the clay golem has a go at you again. It's never... Me again? Yeah. I'm not anywhere near it. Oh no, that's me, isn't it? Right, yeah. okay, sorry, me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hit. So I'll take one. Okay, end of the round. Round five, you're first. So we're killing this one now, aren't yep. we? Yeah. Okay then. Um... But now I want some shields, don't I, to be able to use it on this one later. Yes. Right, so two attack and two defence. Yeah. And then hopefully I'll have stuff to save. So three damage kills it. Yep. And you can lock the, the bones one. in. Okay. And you took one damage <laughs> and healed one. Yes. So that, that one. Uh, I take one damage and heal one and the poison goes. And then I'm just going to hit this. So two attack dice, two defense dice. So you said something about it no. breaks the yeah. dice? I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to roll this one. So any attack dice that I use to deal damage to it, go here. Okay. And then count against me. So I can't use them again. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so I dealt one damage to it with that. That's that gone. Uh, I got a bones which I'm going to put in there. I've got shields which I'm going to put in there. And I'm going to put that back because I don't want it. Okay, and now it hits me for one. One damage, get rid of that. Okay, round six. Fatigue rounds. We all lose a health. You're first. 
them first, so I better get closer to it. One, two. And then, shall I just get some defense to be able to do the shield yeah. bashing Sounds thing? Good. So only one, but if you wanted to, you could shield shock it. Yes, I was going to say, I could do the shock In fact, thing. I'd have probably used one attack dice just because you've got your bonus. But never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can use your okay. shield shock. We've never used this before. No. So it, it, it's like a shield bash. Yeah, so it is a it shield bash stuns and it. stuns it. Yeah. Okay, so it takes two damage from your shield bash. And it is stunned. So we are supposed to put a stunned thing on it, which is that, I think. Is that stunned? Add stun no, effect to that's die. Not it. it's no. The, that one. I don't know what it is. It's the stars. It's in the bottom uh, right of your. Ah, uh, yeah. Sheet. So stunned. it is now stunned. This unit let, oh, loses heal. its next turn. That's a good point. You heal. Oh, yeah. On my turn, I heal. <laughs> And then I hit it. I've only got one attack dice now. But I'm also going to roll that. And I'm going to roll one defense. And it's just healing on that. And we're, we're full. Are we, are we full? You're an eight out of nine. Nine. That's not that bad. No, but I might as well. I might as well heal you. Okay, so these are my four dice. Uh, you still have a bones, Emily, because it only costs three. No, shield shot costs four. It costs five. Sorry, normally costs five, but it costs but Emily four. Four with my yeah. thing. shrooms. Shrooms. Right. So this is all good, because I've dealt it one damage, which kills it. Oh, fab. Right, but I have rolled... Two health, which you can have, putting you back okay. up to full. Thank you. I then roll the double bones here, which I mm. can trade in <laughs> for a fortunate discovery. Oh. So basically, I get uh, acquire a consumable die of my choice. So I am going to I am going to take a poison die. Oh, poison dart, and a poison dart. Right, battle is over. Does it sound very edible? That's gone. Yeah, consumable as in not not <laughs> edible, consumable. Mine are, so that's <laughs> Yours what it's are. Yeah, be. mine are not. <laughs> right, where's my other healing guy? So that's it, that's the end of battle. Um, we get two training points and we get a progress. So we are on six progress. Yeah. There you go. And we got two training points. Oh, gosh. Le yeah. Do you know what to do? Two training points. Well, I was going to go with that so that I can go with that, but I'm now thinking. Yeah, that we, we were quite lucky there that we just got loads and loads of stuff that poisoned us, which was pretty mm. much useless against us, especially with the manticore and the bog pole. What is Which a is taunt effect, die? Taunt, it basically means uh, enemies will go for you. It says in the bottom right of the other side of your sheet what it does for you. Ah. Until the start of this unit's next turn, adjacent opposing units must attack this unit. Yeah. You protect me by making them attack you. So if I was... If I had, like, three or four mm. health, then that would be great, but... I got lots of health. Is it worth spending two skill points on bone saw, or should I just increase? I think I'm going to increase my attack. So I'm going to spend my first training point on trying to increase my attack. Mm. So I have to roll. I got a bones, so I can't spend it on attack. Ah. So instead, I will spend it on... Yeah, I'll spend it on health. Okay, and then my second training point, I will spend on attack. And I've done it. There you go. That's my two training points spent. 
I would like to do something similar, actually. Okay. I have an attack dice. Mm hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking about dex. Yes. So your attack has gone up to three. But you, mo you might want to spend your second one on dex. <sighs> yes. Yes, because this is already nine. So yeah. It's quite good. So, yeah, five yes. dex is, is pretty good. But these are nice. These are really nice. These I've never played that nice. character before. So, okay. The, the other one is a permanent shield. Right. And then it's the taunt. Okay. So it is now the recovery phase. Oh, yeah. We can, we can try and get rid of our loot for some better loot. I'm, I'm going to keep that one, definitely. I think I'm going to keep that one as well. No, I think I'm just going to keep mine. Yeah, quite like mine. Yeah, I'm quite happy with them. That's nice. Yeah. For when we need it. I suppose another axe might be nice, but the likelihood yeah. of getting another axe. So I'm scouting. Oh. Uh, it's got Hardy with six health. Don't like Hardy. <laughs> Three. Yeah, bone sore. I was looking at bone sore. So three, three that's, is here. That's that one. Yeah. Fine at this point, I think. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So next day we go into day eight. I I think we I think we go for it. Yeah. Because we've got the progress points. So yeah. instead of drawing an encounter card, mm -hmm. we actually encounter more mesh. So remember, if you are playing this game, you should look at the tyrant card first, including the other side so that you know what you're facing. We've not done that today, but that's what you should do. Right, once human, now worgen, Mulmesh has an insatiable hunger for what he once was, uh, for that which he once was. Knowing there is no going back, he lets that hunger fuel his fury toward any non-Eben DeLorean who stands in his way of exacting vengeance. Okay, so the battle queue is made up of buddy uh, points, 16. 8 multiplied by 2, yep, yeah. so we have a 16 point battle queue for all baddies on this card, which was that one, and another one, are placed on top of battle queue, and Mulmesh goes on the bottom, so we've got three fives and a one, that one on top, Mulmesh on the bottom, okay. And Mulmesh is like a level like that. Mulmesh is or uh, higher than that. Yeah, he's he's a tyrant, so he can move diagonally on the battle map. Uh, he's got eight health. He's got six initiative. He's got two attack dice, but he also rolls his special dice every turn, which does fancy stuff. Mm. Um, he's not going to come in for a while, so we can read his abilities when he comes in. Okay. But as I say, normally you wouldn't do that. Normally you would read his abilities beforehand to prepare, so that you knew what you were doing. Okay, so let's set up the battle map. First of all, number one is a dire wolf pup with three health, melee lane one. Then we have an owlbear. Now, I think this is a really nasty one as well. Uh, it's got all sorts of nasty abilities. So that is melee lane two. It has inspire one. So after it has gone, the next one goes and gets better. And it also has Terrify. Uh, after this unit is attacked, place a Terrify effect die on the attacking unit until the end of its turn. If a unit has a Terrify effect die on it at the start of its turn, it may not target any units with the skill Terrify. So if you attack it, you can't attack it again on the next turn. Because okay. you're scared. We have a Stone Golem, which has got Break, and corrosive. Yeah, it's all starting to get a bit nasty now. Where is lane three? There's lane three. That's another melee. Uh, yeah, and then the mm -hmm. third one is the Griffin Howler. Wow. Which has got five health and is lane four. Which is melee. And then we've got those two ready to come in later when we need them so if you want to roll your initiative die i'm on three three uh and what have we got here so number number one is on three 
number two is on four. Under five. Number three is on three. Mm. And then number four is on five. Okay, there we go. Let's check the chat. Keep the golem away from picket. Yeah, so the, uh, so it has break, which we know how that works. Yes. But it also, if it rolls a bones, then at the end of this unit's turn, all remaining defense die in target's active slots must be exhausted immediately. So if it targets you and it hits you and it rolls a bones, you lose all of your defense dice that are there. Right. But it's attacking with three, three attack and two defense. So this is all pretty tough. Yes. Our objective is to kill Mulmesh. If we kill Mulmesh, we win. We don't have to kill everything else. No. But we have to kill two things to get Mulmesh before out. Mulmesh comes out. Yeah. And so we should get the worst or the things that are going to cause us the most damage we yeah. need to focus on, don't yeah. we? Yeah. So, yeah, Danny's asking how much health did we start with. So, uh, Emily's remember. playing on adventurer mode. I'm playing on heroic adventurer mode. Oh, not just lose, says Scott. It's exhaust. Yes. So if you've got any defense die here and its corrosive ability kicks in, mm. those dice go there. They're gone. So it's, it's very, very nasty. Mm. Okay, right. Off we go then. Where are we going to go and what is our plan? Do we even have a plan? We do not. We do not have a plan. So that's going to go before us and that's going to go before us. So are those the ones that we need to be targeting then? If, hmm, I'm not sure. We don't want to be targeting that. No. Except with the shield bash. Your exploding shrooms is going to be really helpful because as long as you can roll one bones against that, you can use all your de defense die on shield bashing it and then you don't have any. You don't have any there, so the corrosive's not going to have any effect on you. No. Worst case, if you attack this, is if you get loads of defense dice and you don't roll the single bones. Right, so actually what I could do is not roll any attack dice at all and just roll defense dice. Um, well, three defense three. dice. You probably want to roll some. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, 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 true. Because you do One attack dice yeah. and then three just defense ones. Because of the break. Hmm. I'm just going to read that inspire again. The next body on the enemy to... Right, okay. So oh, the problem yes. is that he is going to inspire that one. To do what? To attack uh, To take away? their turn immediately. So you move there any guy. So what would happen is after that, that one, on that one's turn, it then inspires that one. So that those three are all going to get to go before us. Okay. Yeah. So Pickett has a workaround if he's in 8 plus 1, which Pickett is not in 8 plus 1. No. But if you were in 8 plus 1, there's a bit of a workaround. Uh, Sean has just arrived. Hi, Sean. Thank you for joining in. We are, it doesn't matter what day we're on. Well, we're on day 7, wasn't it? 8. 8? Eight? Wasn't it 8? It was day 8. Day Maybe 8 of 9, and we are, we are fighting Mulmesh. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I just don't know what our <laughs> best plan is because that's going to attack us and then it's going to fly. So we're not going to be able to hit that this round. Okay. We might have to just go for this. Yeah. That corrosive is harsh. If it rolls a bones, we just don't want to keep. I'm going to have to poison this. Yeah, I, I can poison that. My toxins is my target, so I'm going to have to choose it as my target. I don't have to roll any attack dice, mm -hmm. but I have to choose it as my target in order to put the toxins on it. I could just use the poison dart, which I assume is ranged because it's a dart. Yeah, poison, place a poison effect die on anybody. So I can, I can use the poison dart on that. And then I think I can use my fortunate discovery in the middle of the battle to get another poison dart. Ah. 
Yeah. So I use, oh, yeah, I consume that poison dart. It's gone. Yeah. Back in my tray. I then oh look, there's a dart. I then get another do it dart and I can throw that. It wouldn't break it then because it's not. It's only attack dice. Okay. Yeah. So it's that's only good. literally these dice that okay. is broken by it. So I think that's probably the best plan for the stone golem. Yep. Is I I will double poison dart it and and see what we get. Mm-hmm. That's what one should I go. focus on I, it I then? Know, I don't know. I mean, should we go for the one that's inciting the, yeah. that one, or get rid of that one so it's no longer incited? Well, I could kill it straight away. Yeah, maybe. but that that will then inspire this one. Ah, okay. So this one is the it, it's the next one. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we've maybe got to go for these two early. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is tricky. This is tricky. This one. Mark's confident. Mark thinks we've got it. Okay. Like that? Yeah. Now we got loads of stuff. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so I am going to I am gonna eat my selfie root. So I heal one at the start of each round of the battle. Nice. I, I might as well. There's no there's no limited time on that. That's the best yeah. time to use it. Um Okay. We're both on full at the moment. We anyway. are both on full health. We've got loads of healing, but healing's not. Well, no, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. You get so... to roll your defense dice. Oh yes. Yeah. Three of them. Okay. There we go. Got some ones, and off we go. So it is the Griffin Howler first. So mm -hmm. it attacks me because I'm I'm the nearest. Um, it isn't flying at the moment. At the end of its turn, it flies. Mm. Oh, it's got signal one. Oh, yeah. At the start of this unit's turn, add a single lesser buddy to the bottom of the battle queue. So that, that is a five point buddy. So it adds a one point buddy to the bottom of the battle queue. Okay, well. This skill triggers once per turn for one round. Yeah, so it does it once. Right, so it's hitting me okay. for three attack dice. No shields. Mm. I take five damage. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm almost dead. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Okay, five damage. Wow. I'm so worried now. Okay. Uh, and then it flies. Where's the fly? Flappy, flappy. Uh, is it that one? Cool. Right, so that's now flying, so we can't target it. Well, yeah, it's untargetable, right? Which means until the start of this unit's next turn, it cannot be targeted by opposing units. So things like the throwing axe would be fine because you're not targeting it. Yeah. Okay. Is this is this the one that when you attack it, it, it terrifies, terrifies you? you? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's it done. Okay. Next, this one. It this hits one you for four. Hits me. In the roll. There okay. So that's not bad. Three. Three damage, which is all your shields gone. The bones do nothing. Okay. okay. Um, the terrify only happens when you attack it. Yes. But then it's inspire one kicks in. That comes to there. And this dire wolf pup moves to there mm -hmm. and hits you for one. Uh, two, because it's inspire granted additional attack dice. Just one. Just one damage. You. Okay. Which I get back at the beginning of my turn. It's not my turn. It's, yet. it's not, not my turn quite yet. your turn yet. There we go. Right. So my turn. Your turn. I get one back for the Zelda for route. I can then put one back on anybody. Which is going to be me. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm selfish. Well, no, because and you're the most in need right yeah. now. Okay. Right. Then it's my go. Yeah. So. Have a think about this. Yeah, the innie dice does actually move. It says, inspire, uh, brackets, move their innie die. You're doing something with your dart. I am, I am definitely throwing my dart at the stone golem. That's one dex. Yeah. I'm in a really bad position now because that's flying. I can't target it. 
so I can't use any of my stuff. Right. Well, that's pretty terrible. Mm. Is um, it worth getting bones and? Yeah, I mean, I could get loads of bones. Uh, I mean, I've got two defense, so there's there's two defense. I've got one deck left. Do I want to move? I think I might want to move. Yeah. Because then, I mean, that's going to land next turn, and then I can hit it, but then I won't be able to hit it the turn afterwards. Well, it's like with this one, isn't it? It's yeah. going to be every other. So I, I think I'm going to move to here. Oh, Zelfie Root is start of round. Yes, you're right. Okay, thank you. Start of round. So I need to put a reminder. Uh, what should I use as a reminder? Let's use this as a Zelfie Root <laughs> reminder. There you go. Um, so I think that's probably it, unless I roll this one. But then if I roll this one for the bones... And then not using it for anything else. Hmm. What else does it do? It heals. Heals. Um, and it also the allows me to... The red one heals, though. Yeah, that heals. This also can heal, but this can also find me some loot, which I don't really want now. Or it can allow me to re-roll. A rolled med kit or med pack die may be re-rolled. If I rolled that... Yeah. Um, I can lock that to oh. allow me to then re-roll this to get better results. It's basically healing. I think I probably wanted that just for more healing. Um, I mean, I might as well roll it. Yeah, you can always change your mind. Yeah, but don't I you? don't have a target this turn, so I can't use the toxins. Okay. Um, so I've rolled the bones, I've rolled one, I've got a two, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the poisonous dart to put a two poison on that, and I'm going to lock that back in there. Okay. Done. Done. Your go. My go. I heal one. You heal one, because of your regeneration. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dex, I moved. So yeah, I, I didn't. I wouldn't have bothered rolling that. No, you wouldn't then. have bothered no, then, would you? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so then I want to hit this with as much as. With as much as you can. Yeah. Hit five decks. I do. Five decks is amazing. Should I do three defense, two attack? That's what I was thinking. Or three attack and two defense. No, I think you're right. I think three defense because there's two bones on a defense die and only one on an attack die. Yeah. So that gives you more chance of getting a bones. Bones and which a if shield. You're lucky, to do the shield thing as well. You can just do loads of damage and kill it. If you're lucky. This, this would be great if you did. It would be helpful. It, it would be very, very helpful. Yeah. Off we go then. Ah. Mm. No. So it's three damage. Three damage. One, two, three. It's down to three. Oh. Yeah. It's so close, isn't it? Yeah. I think keep the defence. Because you're not going to get it corroded. Okay, but you are now yeah. terrified. I'm now terrified. So we need to put a feel it. terrify effect on you, which is... All the dice from the expansions here as well. So there you go. Mm -hmm. You're now terrified. If a unit has a terrified die on it at the start of its turn, it may not target any units with the skill terrify. Yeah. So you can't attack the owlbear on your next turn. No. But okay. I could kill something else. You could kill. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you're done. So now we've got this. It moves two mm -hmm. down to here. Mm -hmm. I believe. That would make sense. Okay. Right, round two. Doesn't it get poisoned at all? Oh, sorry, yeah. It takes two damage, and the poison goes down by one. Oh, and it rolls two defense dice. It still rolls its defense dice as normal. And it's got one defense, and it 
does corrode if it had a target, which it didn't. It's lucky. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, round two, I get a heal from my Zelfie route. And now we do this. That one. What does he do now? If the flight effect die is active on this unit at the start of its turn, immediately place this unit adjacent to the weakest available opposing unit and target it. So that's me. So it goes, it goes adjacent to me. We can put it there or we can put it there. I'm thinking here. Yeah. Okay. And then it targets me with three attack dice. The signal one is already done. So yeah, it's just three attack dice. <laughs> okay. Am I getting all the rules right? I'm, uh, I'm getting the, the base rules right. The problem is when there's little quirky rules that I get wrong. Two damage, two damage and it's a bones. And I'd like to be playing this once every two weeks. Once every month is great, but there are certain little rules that I keep forgetting. Whereas if I played it once every two weeks, that would be fine. What am I doing? Two attack. It's hitting me, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. So I take one off there. George distracted me by complimenting me. Right. You put the bones there. I did. That's I thought it was yeah. my attack for some reason. Yes, me too. <laughs> okay, so that's okay. it done. That's it done. Now we have the owl bear. Yeah. Which attacks you for four. Oh. That's fine <gasps> damage, but you do have that. So you take four damage. Okay. That's so many. And then it inspires oh, the dire wolf pup to attack you, which attacks you for two. Three more damage. Oh my god. One, two. Right, this is where I come in and heal you. How many are you down to? Two. Two? Two. Right, okay. <laughs> That's fine. This is this is what I'm here for. So my go. I have four decks. Not enough. I'm going to use one, two, You heal one on yourself, by the way. I heal one on anybody. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to heal you. I'm going to use my ability to heal you. OK. This is going to be tricky. Yeah. Hmm. I think you're going to get rid of that Albert next turn. I hope so. If it I doesn't mean... kill me first. <laughs> but I've got some mixed berries. That's true. That is true. I can use some mixed berries. That will heal me for three. Yeah, that is I will true. heal by one. So that's another four. Mm hmm. To be fair, though, I've just been taken out. Uh, Danny's asking, if there are no gear locks on the board, would a baddie with defense die just not move and then roll those? So, yes. Yeah, the baddies roll their defense die even if there's nobody to attack, if that's what you meant. Mm. Yeah, so you're going to attack this one, yeah? I was going to. Yeah. I'm I'm umming and ahhing about the possibility of moving two to here and hitting that one and poisoning it just to get rid mm. of it because you can't attack it but because it's doing four dice on you this turn you can't attack it back I can't do any sh oh you can attack this I we can, can yes. we can both go for this one okay so yeah that's what I'm doing uh, oh but then then this will get in if we kill this one this one will get will get in. Yeah. You'll just have to make sure you don't have any shields left and that you shield bash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you've got a bone, so you will. You'll be able to do yes. it. Yes. Yes. And I need to make sure I don't have any as well. Mm. Okay, so let's go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target this mm -hmm. with these four dice. Okay. Yes, we are looking low on health. Very Cause, low. Yeah, because Emily just got hit for a lot. seven, I think. Yeah, it was. 
Okay, so I'm going to heal you for five, oh, and then I'll deal you. two damage. But that's my healing dog gone. I've done two damage to this. True, and we're using it all up now, aren't we? Yeah. And we're not even against the okay. big one. But I can get one of those dice back if I want to. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that is my go done. You'll go. I better save the mixed berries, and I'm not going to use them I think now. So. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah, you're looking a bit healthier now. If you can kill this griffin howler, that'd be great. <laughs> it's only three. It's got it? three health left. Only three. Yeah. Um. You got five decks. Three. Two attack? Two attack. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you heal one at the start of your turn? Oh, yes, I do. Be one full? Oh, one, might two, be. three, four, five, seven, eight. I am. Hey, back to full. Well, that was impressive. Okay. Right. Well, well. It's good news and bad news. <laughs> You've dealt it three damage just with the attack, yeah. which has killed it. The bad news is that those are wasted because if you leave them there, no, you're fine. That's going to attack me because it's got the little, it's attacking the weakest one. Oh. So that is moving to there and will attack me. So you're fine. You can keep those there. And then next turn, you can shield bash it and get rid of it. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. If they're there, they might not be there. They might be keeping you alive from the owl there. But Probably. the good news is you're not going to lose them. True, and they'll be nice against that one yeah. because he's quite tough. Yeah, okay. So it okay. is now the stone golem. The stone golem takes the damage and the poison wears off. Mm -hmm. And then the stone golem moves two, and it targets the weakest character, which is me. The stone golem is rolling three attack dice and one defense because it's already got one on there. Andre is saying, why was the shield die a problem? I'm not sure. What shield sure. die? Oh, my shield die? Yeah. Yeah, it's because this has got corrosive. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm no longer terrified. You are no longer terrified. Right. Oh, dear. Five? Yeah. That's an extraordinarily bad roll. We've been doing that quite frequently, actually. That, yeah, I think these dice... I think I, loaded. I, I need to speak to Chip Theory Games again about more faulty dice. But that is me knocked out. No. Yeah. But you... you oh, it's not your turn, is it's it? It's not my turn. Oh, yeah, and it's the end of the... Yeah, I, I was... Yeah, I was just hoping I wouldn't take five damage. We've got one more day to do it in. But yeah, that is that is five damage. Damn. And that is me. What does that mean then? Knocked out. It means you're on your own. No. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a problem. Yeah, five on three dice is more common than you'd think. George is gonna tell us the stats in a minute. He's gonna tell us the odds of getting five on three dice. Yeah. Yeah, they only roll, but yeah, Emily should roll dice from now on. Right, end of the round. We unfortunately get this. I mean, Mulmish isn't even here yet, so th this is this is a loss, and we'll just go to the next day. Uh, the next day. Yeah, we we still we have nine days to do it in. So we failed right. this day. We try again the next day. Right. We've got one more day to do it. That's the advantage of challenging the tyrant on day eight rather than mm -hmm. day nine. Um, anyway, <laughs> this has arrived. And that, so you're coming back, or I will come back on day nine. Yeah, I'm not coming back. So in in this until fight. then, I'm here by myself, you're there, surrounded in the surrounded. middle. Of them. I love yeah. them. <laughs> and Mumesh hasn't turned up yet. You'll be fine. Oh, You'll be fine. 
Um, well, they're all going to hit me in quick one. succession, so I'm pretty one, sure I'm. But yeah, so round three. Dead. Don't die. Probably worth saving loot. Yeah, yeah. Basically, don't don't use anything. Save it and see what happens. But yeah, that Zelfi route, unfortunately. So when we try again on day nine, yeah. what happens in terms of baddies? Is it, it be new ones? Body, yeah, new ones. New ones, yeah. okay. Um, so no matter what happens now, these go? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, so okay, the purple so, one yeah. is the owlbear. Yeah. Catch you for four. Yeah. Uh, four damage. So that's that's all of your shields gone. Oh yeah. That's the owl bear done. Then the dire wolf pup. Oh no, then it's got inspire. So then the dire wolf pup attacks you for two, which is one damage. And then it go go. So you heal one. There you go. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> for now. We can totally do this. So, my big problem is. Oh, yeah, but I better bear, take that one first, am I? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the owlbear is nasty. Yeah, okay. Um, what do you want to hit it with? <sighs> yeah, you'll so, be able to kill it. Yeah. So, two attack and three defense. Or three attack. Or do you want to get rid of the stone golem just so it's gone? The stone. Oh, this one. Oh, then again, you'd need four. You don't want to use any attack dice on the stone golem because no. they break. But so you'd have to roll four points of defense. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you could use three. You could use an attack die on it and just lose one attack die. Yeah, true. You've still got. You could. I'm still doomed anyway. I'm just thinking the corrosive is a problem. For Without that corrosive, you could safely leave dice here. Yeah. Okay. We'll attack him first then. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll do... To attack yeah. three defence? Yeah. Oh, you've got that as well. True. True. And remember, that counts for shield bash. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take one. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's five dice. Yeah, we don't know if this is the right decision or not tactically, but we will see. Okay. So it's two attack. So, yeah, you, you have choices here. Yeah. Because you've got, you've got the five you need. Mm. You don't have to attack it at all. No. True. Is that is that right? Let me just check that dice again. It it seems I too really simple. It. it seems like it is just prevents hash damage treated. It goes into your active slot, and it prevents hash damage treated as a, as a defense die when active, or shield bash and shield shock. Yeah. So you don't have to use this at all. You could just hit it for mm. for five with a shield bash. In fact, the shield bash use all of them. Remove all defense dice. I think that's the trick. Roll. Yeah, you've got to use them all. Okay, so yeah. Which is a shame. Oh no! In fact, you do need five because it's got one shield. Yes. So perfect then. Okay. That's what we're doing. So you use one of your bones. For, from your yeah, because plan. don't use the attack die. And we use all of them. Five damage done. Gone. Which means Mulmer, she's going to turn up at the end of the round. Can this one go back? Or? No, that's no it's, it's exhausted. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. That's exhausted. Okay, so you're done. Yeah. Now we have the yellow one, which gone. Then we have the green one, which moves to there, attacks you for two, and then takes off. Two damage. And he's now flying. Okay, so end of the round, Mulmer, she arrives. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mulmesh is always goes at the top because he's a tyrant. Round four. Uh, melee, lane three. So <coughs> it's got frenzy two, 
which if two of Mulmesh's attack dice hit, then you roll the attack dice again and add the total damage on. Okay. It also has the retreat ability. If Mulmesh starts his turn at three hit points or fewer, he is removed from the battle map and goes on top of the battle queue. His hit points is restored once he rejoins the battle. Okay. It's also got shrouded. It can only be targeted by adjacent units, which is fine for us because we're melee. Uh, and then it's got a special attack dice. Okay. Someone suggests I get into the yes. corner. Yeah. Yeah. Getting into the corner <laughs> would be good. I'm not sure I'll get to that. that. Okay. It's Mulmesh first. I have a feeling I might die uh, before Mulmesh then. That's fine. Can't get to you. But he can move diagonally, so he goes to here. Mm. Okay, so that's more mesh done. Oh no, he still rolls his tyrant die. Uh, it is howl. All units friendly to more mesh immediately improve one spot on the ini meter, but cannot go higher than more mesh. So I just so end up at the bottom. Thing, well, that means is yeah. that. Okay, so that's more mesh done. Mm. Next is the Albert. Oh, One ah, damage. Thank you, Paul. Um, then the Albear inspires the direwolf pup. Two damage. Then the Griffin Yearling attacks you. Yeah. For two damage and is no longer flying. Right, your go. Remember, all you need to do is kill Mulmesh. <laughs> <laughs> If you can. I get a health back. You get three, you get a health back. You're on three health. Woohoo! This is the last hurrah, really. Yeah. Basically. So, I might as well just move and attack. Mulmesh. Yeah, why not? Can't so do one, anything else. One dex to move. And then. Four decks left. Four decks left. So. Two and two? Mm, yeah. Two and two. You've got your... Are you going to save that for day, day nine? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't think you're going to do this. Well, not really. And even if I do... Hmm. I'm not going to survive another round. You're not round. going to survive another round. Okay. Yeah. Can you have battle cam? You can have battle cam. Oh, oh you've just done 20 damage. Oh no, people can see it. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's a Can't shame. even do the shield bashing. That's disappointing. No, otherwise you could have stunned it. That yeah. would have been awesome. So it's three damage. Yeah. Three damage and lots of bones. Yeah, but no defense. That's disappointing. It is. Yeah. I could have got some shields. Could have at least have had a. Proper shot. Actually, there's not that many discs left. No. There's only five left. Yeah. <laughs> five. That's it. If you'd, if you'd have rolled heavily, heavily on defense, then and got and got some good defense, it would be down to you could have almost killed it. Mm. Yeah. It's a you, shame you I didn't have, have my purple that. one still, isn't it? Yeah. But so it was needed at another time. End of the round. Uh, there's no room for this to turn up, so we go to round five. And the yellow one goes first. And here we go. So it's attacking you for two. And it's special die. Okay. And both of those hit. Yeah. Which means we roll again an add on. Yeah, dead. I'm dead. Okay. So you come back. I come back. Mm. It means the recovery phase. We both have to choose mm. the recover option. Yes. So back to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine. seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, so that day is over. Uh, your backup plan goes. My backup plan goes. Oh, yeah. And we do. So, yeah, that was day eight. And we now do day nine, mm -hmm. where we choose to encounter more again. again. But this time. Now. So here, here's the rule. Here, here's, here's the rules question. 
what happens to these baddies? Because I don't believe they go into the discarded baddies. I think they go to the bottom of the stacks. No. Because we didn't actually defeat them. Or do they get shuffled in? Um, Brett is saying you could have shield shocked it, but it probably wouldn't have helped. Yeah, so you could have stunned it and dealt it no damage, but it, it, you wouldn't have survived the round anyway. No. The owl there would have moved no. and killed you. Uh, cycle to the bottom of the stack. I thought so. I thought so. Because we didn't defeat them. Oh. They, it doesn't matter because if we run out, you just go through the, the dead ones and shuffle them in. Yeah, but the dead ones aren't too bad. We know there's bad ones. Yeah, don't. true. We want lots of the poison ones. Right, that's that done. We've tidied up. Move these away. Um, so, the Zelfie root reminder can go. And day nine, we choose to encounter more mesh. So here we go again. Uh, but this time we have 18 baddie points. And then all baddies on this card are placed on top of battle cube. So at least we don't have any this time. It is just those three and those three with more mesh on the bottom. Okay, here we go. Let's just see so many of them. See what we've got, yeah. I thought we were all right. There's the two really bad ones that we chose to put down the bottom. Yeah. I can't remember what they were, but we were like, oh no, we don't want them. So the dragon delinquent. That has now arrived with Engulf, yeah. so we can try and use Engulf to our advantage. Uh, we have the <coughs> Cobalt Fanatic, which is lane two, melee. Uh, then we have a Cobalt Fanatic. Oh no, that is no, a Cobalt no, that Fanatic. Is then we have and the Owlbear again, which is lane three and melee. And then we have the Clay Golem in lane four, which is melee. Okay, so our initiatives. Oh, Shield Shock doesn't affect Tyrants, says George. Yes, and John. Yeah, good point. I have all the three. I will put their initiatives on. Yeah, three as well. Not good, is it? Uh, number one is going on six. Uh, number two is going on three, so that's after us. Uh, number four is going on two. Number three is going on four. Right, that's the order. Mm -hmm. So, this is going first. It's going to attack the weakest of us. We've both got nine health, so we choose. Mm -hmm. But it's going to deal damage to the things next to it as well. So um, I'm thinking... We need to be somewhere where it will... Yeah. I think if you want to start there, and I start here, then we'll get that to attack me, and it'll also deal damage to that. Oh yeah, another reason to focus on the owlbear is because then the owlbear would be dead. Which means we wouldn't have got it. But in fact, the five the five point stack is empty, so we would have had to shuffle all of the dead ones and and get a replacement. Mm. Okay, so before we start, do I want to use my fortunate discovery to find a poison dart? Yes. Well, it's either that or oh. I could find some liquid life, which I could then apply to us. Which means if we die, we come back. So I might save it. Yeah. Because that. That poison dart was really good against the it was really good. cave golem. We don't have a cave golem. No. This true. time. We do have the clay golem. Was it a cave golem? Something. Did we kill it? The yes. stone golem. We killed it, did we? Yes. Okay, right, yeah. So maybe maybe I should put the poison dart on the clay golem. No, I want to use the I want to use the poison on on that, right? Because it's hardy. Yes. And then when the poison runs out, I might then. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think that's fine. I'm not going to use the fortunate discovery right now. So round one, it is the dragon delinquent first. 
Okay then. He attacks me. It's got two attack and two defense. Okay, so it's done two damage to me. Which would also do two damage to this, but because it's hardy, it can only take one. And does this purple dice come back now? It does come back, yeah. It does, that's what I thought. And it's got three shields. Oh, three it's shields. also got weakened two. Oh, if it rolls a bones. If it rolls a bones, it's got weakened two. Right. Okay, could have mm -hmm. done without that. Next is the owlbear, mm -hmm. which attacks you. Oh, you need to roll your three oh, yeah, yeah. defense. Toxins on the kobold, poison dart on the owlbear. I, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Okay, owlbear's attacking you. Three damage. <laughs> but it inspires, unfortunately, the kobold fanatic. Who then attacks me for four. Wow. Mm. Oh, and that's got Inspire as well. Oh, no. So that inspires that one, and that inspires that one. Oh, dear. Right. Oh. So that's five, five damage. Five. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm down to two health already <laughs> from nine. I might, I might die. I might die before I've even had a go. This would be terrible. Oh yeah. Shields. I should have got, got rid of those two, yeah. shouldn't I, instead of two of them. Yeah. So it inspires so that inspires mm. this one mm. that right. moves to here and attacks me for two. No. This this might be game over. Three damage, I'm dead. Wow. I didn't even <laughs> get a go. Didn't even have a try. Didn't even have a turn. <laughs> That's so bad. Okay. Well, do, do you want to do just play and see how far you get? <laughs> but I thought we were going to breeze this. I thought we'd at least have a try. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think we were doing quite well we were. during the game. We were getting lots of extra bonuses and loot and progress points. And then yeah. it came down to it. And why have we done so bad? Why have we done so bad? Um... Not just it's my bad really rolling. bad ones. Yeah, yeah. I am very curious to see what people uh, could or would have done. I mean, I've, I, George said focus on the owlbear last time, but I don't think that would have... That couldn't have changed this. This was, this was harsh. Anyway, that's me out. It's your go. Off you go. You've got, um, you've got those four and these three. <laughs> there's four and these three. <laughs> I've got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Right. So. Well, the chat's enjoying it anyway, so that's that's good. That's the main thing. I'm at quite okay health, so maybe not bother with that. Yeah. Yeah. This round. This round. Like I might get to another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might. You might not. Let's take the purple one. Yep. We're gonna need as many of these defenses as possible, aren't we? And one attack. Well. Okay, so if I have three, two attack, mm -hmm. two attack, yeah. Yeah, but, hmm. Right, so we've got three attack. So three Double. damage to it, yeah. Three damage. Okay. And you could bash it to death. Yeah. So yeah, use the bones, three of them, shield bash, owlbear dead. There you go. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. <laughs> right. So now this arrives. It is a dragon whelp. It is ranged on lane three. Mm. Okay, which means it comes in at the bottom. So it's the blue one. 
So it's attacking you. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't roll the defense dice because both of its defense dice are on, but it attacks you with engulf. You're not next to anything else. Just one. One damage, but it rolled a bones. So you lose two points of dex for next turn. Okay. Uh, put that there to everyone. So then it's the purple one. So it moves two. We can choose where it moves. You probably want to move it there so that that does... Oh, that's ranged, so it doesn't actually matter. Okay. If you put it there, the clay golem can't get you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that hits you for three. Mm. Three damage. And that inspires this one, which moves one, two. Mm -hmm. You can move it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it's your go. My go. Um, but with only three dice. You've only got three decks. And helpful. this has got hardy. Helpful, helpful. So it can only take one point of damage this turn. Whatever you do to it, it can only take one damage. That's rubbish, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Can't even run away from it. You can go and kill the dragon whelp instead. <laughs> <laughs> if I do that, though, I've only got one. You might want to go there. Well, right in the middle of them all. Yeah, because then when the engulf hits, it actually hits everything else. If I survive that long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having the one point wolf is a good thing in the tyrant fight, is it? Okay. Oh, Mark is saying this is the most inspired he's ever seen buddies. It's been, it's been interesting. <laughs> very the one inspired. inspires the next one, which inspires the next one, which inspires the next one. So, yeah. one. So you've only got two decks left. Two. Mm -hmm. You've got one deck left. <laughs> I get one of these you get a heal. on my turn. Yeah. And you can use your one dex on that. Yeah. To heal. Yeah. Hopefully for, for four. Yeah. For three. Three. You happy with the three? This is a, yeah. Well, okay. There you go. It'll do. So you're going to wander right into the middle of them, sit down, and eat some goblin jerky. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's this one. This attacks you for two, and it's got weakened one. So two damage, and you are weakened for next turn. What does that mean? The same. You got minus one dex next turn. <sighs> but it's only minus one. Minus two. Right. End of the round. Nothing new arrives. That wasn't round one, was it? No, that was round two. About 100. So round three. This goes. And it does right. two attack. Was it not round one? How many goes have you had? I think you've had two goes. Well, maybe I have had two yeah, goes. Yeah, because you killed yeah. the owlbear in the yes. first round. Yeah, yes. so that was round two. Okay. Okay, so... so... The What's killing dragon me first? delinquent is going to attack you, and it's dealt two damage, which comes off you, but also comes off one comes off that. Ah, now mm. we have one of the most oddest rules in a board game ever. But mm. this is the official rule, even though I have to rule it another way. But tonight we're going to use the official rules. Yeah. This dragon's breath has just gone out. It can't attack anymore. Mm -hmm. because it just dealt, so this is the correct rules as per the rules of the game, but it is weird. Right. This attacked, and those attack dice mm -hmm. that this attacked with dealt damage to this, which has break. Therefore, these attack dice, that dragon can now no longer attack for the rest of the game. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, very odd rule, but <laughs> that, is, that is the official rule. Good with that. Uh, and I'm sure some people have ruled that. I know I probably would. Um, but yeah, that dragon is now useless for the rest of the game. So, we now have the purple one, which is this. Probably not going to matter. Three attack dice from the Kobold Fanatic. Two damage. Uh, and that then inspires 
the dragon whelp that attacks you for three. Oh no. This is three damage. Oh and you no. Are dead. Yeah. Oh, the dragon should also lose its two shields. Yeah, it breathes on itself as well. Um, so there you go. We failed. <laughs> and I really thought we were going to do this. I really thought we were going to do this. Um, yeah, just before we wrap things up, um, a big thank you to all of my patron supporters for helping fund the channel. If you've been watching the video, obviously give it a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, but also all of the content that I've made last week and this week is only possible through the support of the Patreon. These are not sponsored videos in any way. Chip Theory Games are not paying me, except in ice cream, to make these videos. Uh, so it is due to the financial support of the Patreon uh, that keeps these videos going. So if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, please consider supporting the channel. You can see the link down in the bottom right, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Right. So the first question is, did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. Right. Yes. Did you think we were going to do well at the end? Um, I thought we'd get further. I, yeah. I thought we'd at least have a try. Maybe not kill the ultimate. Yeah. But I thought we'd at least get to meet him together. Yeah. Based on my previous playthroughs and how well we were doing during the game, mm. like we only failed one encounter, which was the silly flicky dice thing. <laughs> yes. Every other encounter we succeeded and we got one we got one or two training points. Yeah. So I think our characters were pretty good by the time we got to the end. Is this quite typical, would you say? And does it go further uh, on health? It, oh, it, it, it goes, go goes to, to six. six. I, to I six. think there's two main ways you can do the character. You can focus on stats, you can focus on skills. Yeah. If you focus too much mm. on skills, you mm. won't do well. Mm. But I didn't really get many skills. Considering, no. but I mean, this was a short game. There are, some of the tyrants go up to like 10 or 12 days. Oh, right, right okay. This one was a relatively short one in that yeah. you only needed six progress points. Mm -hmm. So that means you only play six or seven days and then you can fight it. Some mm. of them are a lot longer. Um, so yeah, I think we... I would have survived the last game if I had my one extra health from playing on an easier mode. Yeah, absolutely. If I was playing on the adventurer mode, I would have had one extra health and I would have survived. It, it could have made all the difference. Because <laughs> taking that five damage in once was, was hard. Oh. I, I thought we had loads of health. I thought with the healing that we had, the regeneration we had... Again, I, we, even if we didn't do the final battle, I thought we'd at least have given it a go. Yes. And we didn't. In, in both of these final battles, I don't know what it was. Was it, was it just that we had... Terrible battles. The, the wrong minions and a couple For of us. bad dice rolls. Yeah. Joyce says the first fight was winnable. Okay. We should have killed the owlbear. I don't, I don't think that would have helped. No. No. Yeah, it, it was good fun. It's always good fun. Um, even if you win or, or not. Um, but you, you've seen how the character plays. Yeah. So is that a character you'd... Uh, right, I'm going to say, is that a character you'd play again? But I'm actually going to tell you, you should play that character again. I, I would say yes. Yeah. I really liked the whole um, shield bashing mm -hmm. thing. It gave an extra dimension. Yeah. You're not going to have this ever again in any game of Too Many Bones. Because no. look at how much trove loot there is. Yeah. The chance of getting that one... Right... So if you didn't have this, and your shield bash cost you two bones... I don't think it would have made that much no? difference. Okay. I definitely would not have gotten up to the um, shield shock with the yeah. bash thing. Yeah. But I often had... You often had two, didn't two you? Two bones. Yeah. It's true then I could save one to use later. Again. Yeah. So maybe it would have had an effect, but I don't think it would have had a massive effect. Yeah. Obviously, these are amazing. Those, those are really good. So that's from Stand Ground and Sword Very Advance. Yeah. And the other one is Shield Form, is it? Yeah. The okay. other one is a, a Shield. And then the other one, like I said, was Taunt. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's so many different ways you can go with your character. Mm. You can not go down that route at all, and you can go down that route. Um, yeah, I didn't see the point of those. Right. Um, yeah, they might so be there's... against certain... True, times. it might have been more useful for other stuff. There yeah. was like a switch, so you can swap positions okay. with an adjacent unit. And a rush, you can move up to three positions. Okay. It's all about movement, I suppose. Yeah. And then there's a repost. When targeted by an adjacent baddie, you can avoid all damage and effects that, that turn. 
Nice. Well, that would have been nice, but yeah. that was like the really like right. rare thing yeah. to get from it. So. But yes, I'm glad I focused on those to get those. Yeah, those were good. Those were useful. Uh, so George explained earlier that our positioning ended up having all of the attacks against one gear lock instead of spreading them between two of us. What? Yeah, in fight two, when I put myself, uh, I think I put myself mm -hmm. there, and you put yourself there. Yeah. It meant that I ended up facing. Three. One attack, then another attack, then another attack. And because of the Inspire, it all happened before we got to take a turn. Yeah. Now, I thought that positioning was good because I didn't want the Engulf to hit both of us. Mm -hmm. But maybe I should have started there or something like that. But yeah, your, your initial position uh, can actually make quite a lot of difference to how it plays. And there's people in the chat who are who are experts at the game, so of course we're, you know, I mean I'm still learning. I'm like ten games in, and I'm still I'm still learning. But I haven't played this character for a while, so I was a little bit rusty with it. And I, Did I you didn't like really. It? I enjoy patches because I quite like support characters that are healing. I just thought that I would be healing you a lot more. I thought you'd be the tank. You'd be taking quite a lot of damage, mm. and then I'd I'd be healing you. Um, but it didn't really work out that well. Yeah. I'd, I'd definitely play this one again. In fact, all three of the characters I've played, I'd definitely play again. Um, and the characters that other people have played, uh, Rick's played a Nugget, which I really liked, so I kind of want to play Nugget because she's got this longsword that keeps coming back. Um, Scott likes playing Gasket. Gasket is actually uh, a gear lock that's in like a mechanised thing. I think he's like a, yeah, some kind of mechanised whatever. So it works very, very differently. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I've got like eight or nine gear locks. They all play very, very differently. But I think one of the tricks of this game is learning how a gear lock works mm. so that you know which things to do depending on what you're fighting. So yes. we now know that playing against Mulmesh, we are fighting against beasts, uh, bog monsters, and scales. So if you look through... <laughs> This is what you need to do when you're when you're playing the game and you start learning it. You think, right, okay, so which are the beasts? The beasts are the ones with flight, lashback one, and stuff like that. The bog ones are the ones with poison. Okay, and the scales ones, they're the ones with hardy and compound. So not all of them, but generally speaking, when you are a, an experienced player and you see these symbols, you know what you're going to be facing. How many are there? Is it four, did you say? Six. Four different ones. Six. Five, six, there we go. Trolls, orcs, scales, goblins, bogs, and beasts. So there's six different types in the game, and each type is themed around mm -hmm. certain things. So um, break, for example. <laughs> break was on the golems, which yes. is the bog monsters. So that was a bog monster. Yeah, so the bog monsters have got break and poison. Mm. Um, the scales ones have got hardy and inspire. So yeah, e each one comes with sort of its own its own things. But other ones are as bad. So we're looking at them thinking, oh, that break is terrible, mm. right? The goblins have mischief, <laughs> which is like even worse. So yeah, there are di there are different baddies. Um, yeah, there are two different types with the other expansions as well. So yeah, lots of lots of different things in there. But yeah, I mean, I always enjoy playing it. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, then then that's good. Uh, yeah. I'm actually due to play this again. So the next stream for those people who only watch my Too Many Bones streams, because I know there are a few of you out there, that's fine. Uh, I have another game of Too Many Bones planned for the end of this month. So keep an eye on the social media and on the uh, YouTube channel. But I think it is the Saturday, the 26th of June. I'm doing a three player game. So all of my games of this this year have been two player, either mm -hmm. remotely or, sorry, one or two player, either just me mm -hmm. or somebody else remotely. On Saturday, 26th of June, Rick is coming round and we're playing with Scott remotely. So oh. we're doing a three player game with Rick here in person and Scott playing remotely. We haven't done a three player game before. Mm. Uh, That'll and be do, interesting. And doing a three player game in an evening is gonna take longer, right? Yeah. So that's why we're doing it on a Saturday because it's probably going to take most of the day, Good idea. I think. Yeah. Um, it does play up to four. 
I've never played it at four. I don't know whether I ever would play it at four. It must be very busy. This was this would be very busy. This one. But also, I mean, if you've played it at four, let me know. Let me know in the chat oh, if you have played this game at four. Because in one way it would be epic, but in another way, I think I'd get the same enjoyment out of a three-player game in less time. Yeah. It's, it's like a lot of four-player games. I, I think three might be the optimum number. So yes, three is a good number, saying people in chat. Um, twelve is saying George. You're, you're saying a twelve-player game? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're not. I know. Um, but yeah, that's the next too many bone stream. So we're all done. It also takes me about half an hour to put everything away. I'll show you. I the, can I, see I, I'll show you the trophy chest off camera. <laughs> really, really good. But it, the, this game does take a while to put away. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, as I say, for all of the support from all of my Patreon supporters. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers, Emily. Thank you. Bye -bye. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.